I now call to order the budget work session of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpur Springs on Monday, August 12, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Alahuzis. Here. Vice Mayor Ban Oh, Vice Mayor Tara Penny. Here. <laughs> Commissioner Sieber. Here. Commissioner Carr. Here. Commissioner Donovan. Here. Yeah. Well, good evening, everyone, and I'd like to remind to everyone that uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting is for the Board of Commissioners to study issues together and analyze information to clarify questions. No notes, no votes were conducted during the work session. No public comments will be allowed tonight on the budget. However, it will be allowed during the two public hearings that we have scheduled for Wednesday, September 4th, 2019 and Tuesday, September 17, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. At the uh, last budget work session, which was on July 16, 2019, we discussed the general fund and the uh, enterprise funds. Well, tonight we'll be discussing the uh, CIP budget, the CRA budget salaries, and uh, classification plan, and any follow-ups that we have from uh, July 16 work session. And I'd like to turn it over to uh, Mr. Licurus and Ron for the presentation. Yes, again, like the last one, each of these areas will start off with a short presentation from Ron Herring and then go into each item. Ron? Uh, good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Ron Herring, Finance Director. As, as the Mayor said, this is the bu second budget work session, and the first item is CIP uh, Capital Outlay, and I'll just go through my presentation here. Uh, this slide was on one of your other slides from the first budget work session, but it's just trying to tell you that in the back of the executive summary, um, highlighted there, pages 98 to 100, is a, really, is a good summary of all the CIP pro, uh, programs in the 2020 budget. And highlighted in the bottom is the capital outlay, pages on 115 to 116, where it has all the capital outlay. And in, in case you, I, I gave you all handouts there, in case you can't see the presentation or you're having trouble with the book here, so I got presentation, I got copies of the presentations for all you there in case you need it. Uh, the proposed budget for 2020 for the CIP is 11.2 million. The projected budget for the five-year program for 2020 to 2024 is 34.5 million. And the CIP is based on larger projects and uh, the funds that are involved. Capital outlay is mostly for the smaller equipment, over $1,000 in life in excess of two years. The total capital outlay is 845221 And just a slide graphically to show for fiscal year 2020, that 11.2 million of the CIP program is broken out to physical environment, 9.4 million, and that's mostly funded by the water and sewer and stormwater funds. The balance public safety, uh, culture, recreation, transportation, as funded by the Penny Fund. This slide is showing the five-year CIP the 34.5 million, uh, like I say, the majority is physical environment, the 27 million funded by water and sewer and stormwater funds. The balance, public safety, culture, recreation, transportation is um, mostly uh, funded by the Penny Fund. And trying to go to those pages 89 there in your executive summary, this is, these slides are gonna list all those projects out there, starting by public safety, and we got police vehicles, 408,000, fire staff vehicles, 60,000, public safety building gates, 30,000, ladder truck lease payment, 239,000, for total public safety of 738,385. Transportation related projects, brick street and road reconstruction, 350,000, sponge dock seawall engineering, 150,000, hibiscus road stormwater improvement, 120,000. Extend Pinellas Trail at North Anclote, 271,309 for total transportation of 891,309. Continuing on, we got culture and recreation, the exercise park, two pickleball courts, two shuffleboard courts for a total of 90,000 between the two. Recreation center, we've got roof replacement, restroom entryway and new floor for a total of 30,000. Community center roof and windows for 50,000 for a total cultural recreation of 170,000. 
and then getting in the physical environment. We've got stormwater, the big Pent Grow stormwater project, almost 3.2 million, and as notated below, the Swift Mud grant funding, an amount of 1,368,400, will help cover that project. Uh, more physical environment, water and sewer reclaimed. We got Sea Breeze Drive construction, 1.4 million. Future Raw Water Wells, 1.4 million. Beckett Bridge Utilities, 834,000. And then we got the Water Pipe Valve Replacement Program, 450,000. Water Plant Improvements, 300,000. Water Supply Well Fields, 75,000. Water Distribution Improvements, 425,000. Meter repair changeouts, 125,000. GIS improvements, 100,000. Sewage collection improvements, 400,000. Sewage treatment plant improvements, 350,000. Sewage lift station improvements, 100, 260,000. And Oak Leaf Village reclaimed engineering, 150,000. Their total water sewer reclaimed is 6.2 million. Total physical environment at 9.4 million. And then total capital improvement projects for 2020, 11,229,550. And then getting into the capital alley, which is the smaller items, we got it sorted by general fund and then by department. So we've got IT, 84,000. IT theater items, 24,000. Planning, about 4,500. Police, about 71,000. Fire, 22,000. Uh, recreation, 5,000. Library, 8,400. Roads and streets, 2,800. For total general fund that's coming out of unassigned fund balance, 334,000. And then we got items coming out of restricted funds, cemetery perpetual care, we've got 76,000. From the library donations, we got 12,000 for total coming out of restricted general funds, 88,700. For total general fund capital outlay of 422,721. Going on to the special revenue fund, we've got SWAT equipment, 10,000. Uh, public art projects to be determined, 100,000. Future approved land purchase, 48,000. Uh, for total special revenue funds, 158,000, 148,000, sorry. Um, sanitation fund, we've got uh, solid waste for a sanitation total of 151,000. And then getting in the water and sewer, we got ITGIS, 15,000. Collection center, we had, well, we had 10,000, but we bought the micro the scanner this year, so we're taking that out of the budget. Meter repair, maintenance, uh, boom truck, 85,000. For total water and sewer fund, 110,000. And then we get to the golf course fund, uh, 3,500 for a beverage cooler. And then total enterprise fund total is 264,000 for the grand total of capital outlay of 845,221. And then we got some stuff that is in the general fund that was uh, uh, Cut from the general fund, we have the building development, uh, 138,000. We had police, we had 24,000. At I won't go through all the items there. And, and facility maintenance, we had 274,000 of items cut cut out of the budget. Recreation, we had 135,000 total cut out. Parks, 187,600. Roads and streets, 85,000 for and total capital requests cut from the general fund budget of 843,600. And that's basically the end. I just put the timetable and the dates for the rest of the year here. So I'm opening up for discussion. One thing I wanna say, and again, I'm gonna try to let other people do the talking because I don't know how long my voice is gonna last, but there's two sheets of paper here um, that are separate to keep by your left hand side, the proposed budget general fund and the proposed budget items unfunded. These are important as we go through most of the night. The one page is that money that I said that you have that hasn't been allocated that your individual projects can be used. The other one is the things that are not funded. So when you bring up, when you bring up things that you wanna to add to the budget, we just want to make sure you looked at those things was unfunded to make sure there's not anything on that list that may have a priority when you do it. So I just want to tell you to keep those aside. We did those separates because that's kind of the worksheet tonight as we start adding and subtracting to the budget. Um, 
those are two important. They're two singular pieces of paper. One is two pages and one as one should be on your dais. Just keep the, keep those as they do the presentations because we'll be, we'll be using those throughout the night as we talk about things we may want to add or may want to delete to the budget and how much money we have to put additional things that this commission may want to put in there. Okay, thank you. Ron, thank you very much, and I want to thank you for your hard work and your dedication. But if we take a moment, I'd like to uh, invite to the podium uh, the chairman of the Budget Advisory Committee and to give us uh, any comments and recommendations that the board might have. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Um, we did, we did one, we did one, one, one of, one of, one of the, the resolutions that we did was um, to support the, 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 the current overtime for the, for the, for the, for the police and fire departments. We, we looked at past budgets. Um, we had adjustments for inflation, and we believe that, that it's in keeping, and uh, we don't think that necessarily hiring new personnel would cure all those concerns, as a lot of that is uh, special events that we have uh, also with SWAT and Cops for Kids. And um, we also agree with the, with, 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 the, with the Chief's mission that we hire more personnel to fulfill his mission. So we think that the current overtime it is in keeping with the, you know, with the budget and it, and it's affordable. Um, I, I I wasn't there for the fire portion of it, but um, I, 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 I would support the 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 the, the, the same for that. Uh, we also discussed um, the 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 CIP budget, uh, you know, as it relates to police, and we feel that. With the current age of vehicles that that are that are that are that are that are that are being replaced, that that it's worthwhile to go ahead and use those funds that 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 that, that he has requested, for, you know, you know, you know, for that, because delaying that would just would would just, would just cost more in the long run. So that was that that was the only you know you know resolution that we had specifically was for the overtime, and then the, the and then the discussion on on, on the CIP for the. For, uh, you know, for the for the for the for the for the for the police vehicles. Thank you for the uh, recommendation. As a matter of fact, that's one of the follow-ups that we had. Sure. That's the overtime for fire and uh, the mm -hmm. police department. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, anything else that you have to share with us? Uh, no, we've you know reviewed all um, parts of the budget by now. We did we did review the sidewalk improvement fund. There wasn't a, a resolution from it. Um, but on, I, I serve on two boards, and I think one board's going one way, and the other's going the the the, the, the other way. But this board that that I chair, um, there was a consensus, I, at least I guess, that they are in support of the uh, sidewalk improvement fund. Uh, you know, you know, you know, as is now. Is it is now? Keeping yeah, I think charter might have something different, but I I, I, I don't I don't chair that board, so I I won't speak for that. So oh, good, thank you. You're thank welcome. You so much. Mr. McCloy is here too. Do you have anything that you want to share with us? You want to come up here and talk? You want to? Yeah, come, please? Up here, come up here and talk. Mr. McCloy is on the Budget Advisory Committee as well. Good evening. It's been a pleasure to be on that board. And coming from the corporate environment, as soon as I saw a big overtime number, I thought, let's go for it. Uh, I, I believe this is Chief of Police presenting tonight. He did a crystal clear explanation of it, and I walked away. This is this is being managed well. So I hope you, I know he'll do a good job tonight. And thank you for the opportunity to be on the board. Thank you. I had the same concern when I saw the numbers too, because it looks so different than uh, you used to have on the uh, on the corporal. But the nature of the business is so different. We have we have our, our vice chair. I'm 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 as well here today, but but she says that that, that she's good. So who who is the other I'm Miss Hales in the back. I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't see you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. You're sitting all the way in the back. I didn't see you. Yeah, she's Thank hiding you. for us today. Anything else? No, Questions, that's it. concerns? Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. 
Okay, and now we're going to go into the uh, item number two, uh, item number one, which is this uh, CIP budget, and uh, uh, we're going to go and and ask any uh, comment if we have any comments and questions as we did before, and I'm sure Ron will be here to uh, answer those questions. Um, I like to start with uh, page number six of the CIP. And I will start with the uh, uh, the police vehicles, four hundred and eight thousand seven hundred and eighty-five dollars. And I'd like to ask Chief Cochin if he comes or Ron yourself. Um, Chief, I know that we have an account via the forfeit fund, which is the the drug money. Are there any money still available in that fund that we can use for vehicles or no. any other equipment? No. These all come out of local option sales tax. How so does that forfeiture work? money, um, forfeiture money cannot be used to supplant items that you normally budget for. So for, for me to switch to forfeiture, we would never have enough money to fund vehicles like this, and that would set a bad precedent. Okay. Because that money is already used for other initiatives, you know, like our SWAT team and other aspects. So there's never enough money in forfeiture to cover a capital program like this, and the best use of this money is local option sales tax. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chief. Okay, thank Just you. go over the cars. Do you have a list right there of the cars? These aren't 2013, 2014, 2016 cars. The years of the cars you're, you're phasing out? Well, you know, way back when, and, you, you know, you always look to improve, and I've been with the police department over 30 years, so we never had enough vehicles to adequately run the police department. We had vehicles that had hundreds of thousands of miles on them. You have to wait for other vehicles to come in. There were many times um, myself had to take vehicles out to an off-duty, your own vehicle, to cover one of the ancillary intersections because there weren't enough patrol vehicles. So we have a modern fleet that meets our needs. We went from cars lasting a year and a half to cars that now last seven, eight years. Um, if you look, we have a lot of high water vehicles. We have pickup trucks now that we use for code enforcement and other aspects. So our fleet is very modern, which is what you need, comparative to other agencies. People look for that when they get hired. Um, you know, now the officers are getting seven, eight years out of a vehicle. They take better care of them. Maintenance is less, less wear and tear. And of course, you know, we work with maintenance. We work with Sergeant Miller. I mean, we have a strategic plan and a vision on, on how this fleet is kept up. And to take this money away this year, you put me behind two years in vehicles. Again, the, the years of the cars. That's the, I think, yeah, I think all got, you need to say the years of the cars you're replacing. And yeah, we got one car that burnt up, our DEA car burnt up. It was an electrical fire, so we have to replace that. Um, we have one car that has 125,000 miles on it, another one well over 100,000 miles on it. And then what we look at is we look at cost of maintenance. So we have some vehicles that we need to replace out because they're just starting to cost us a lot of money in maintenance. So to delay this, you've got to remember, when we order the cars, it still takes six months to get in and get on the road. So you'll put me behind two years in a fleet that needs to be replenished like that to keep on you know, keep these vehicles going, keep them going for seven, eight years. You know, we get a lot of longevity out of these cars. And in the long run, you have a modern fleet that saves money. So, you know, to, to take away these vehicles this year would be hurting the plan, and you'd never, you'd never make it up. So. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I've got a question on this, Mayor. Sure. Is that right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, Chief, how many vehicles are being replaced this year? Um... Seven or eight. Seven or eight. So just for simple math purposes, you divide seven or eight into the 408,000? Yeah, it's seven. Uh, we have seven vehicles. Okay. Well, it's not really um, because what you have to look at, like Tahoe's, all the police equipment, so you got cages, you got a lot of ancillary equipment, as opposed to some of the unmarked cars that are not as expensive because you don't have all that equipment to outfit them. Right. So... If we do this annually, seven or eight cars, how many uh, vehicles do you think are in the fleet total? I'm just, what I'm trying to get Probably at is trying to figure out if, if there's a way that we don't have to budget $400,000 a year every year for vehicle replacement. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, numbers-wise, how that works. Well, it's either, we, it's either we spend more in maintenance and fall behind in the fleet by not doing this, or we do this and we keep 
the fleet going, we keep the vehicles modern, we keep less maintenance dollars going, we keep vehicles from getting old. Because you gotta remember, I got vehicles coming up behind this that are seven, eight years old. I mean, that's a long time. We used to get a year and a half out of vehicles. So if you ever went back to an old plan where you're running vehicles that last you, you know, on patrol, if you're running a vehicle 24 seven, you get a year and a half out of it. When the vehicles get assigned, we're getting seven years out of them. <laughs> so to fall behind in this plan, in my opinion, is not wise. So how many total vehicles? About right around 55, marked right around 55, somewhere in that area. Seven or eight a year, or seven a year and 55, what, like almost eight, eight years? Is that right? Mm -hmm. And you feel that the replacement versus the additional maintenance is definitely the way to go? Well, absolutely. The way you run this fleet is called the hybrid Indian plan. You see the SOs doing it. A lot of cities are doing it now. This is the most cost-effective way to staff your police department with a modern fleet. High water vehicles, vehicles that meet our needs, vehicles that, you know, especially the Tahoes, they're phenomenal police vehicles. The maintenance on these things is not near what it was on the Chargers. Mm -hmm. so. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Go ahead, Butch. Thank you. Bart Chief Young, would you please come forward? Thank you, sir. On page six, uh, item number two says fire stuff vehicle. What do you mean by st fire again? stuff? Fire staff. stuff staff vehicles. That, that's replacing one of our oldest staff vehicles that we have in our fleet. It's yeah. a 2008 Explorer. It's got about 150,000 miles or so on it. It's we just $60, replaced it. Is that including uh, uh, equipment that it goes with that? Or? There's not really any equipment. It's just a staff vehicle to get the uh, staff around. Our, our fire inspectors around town, and it just replaces our oldest vehicle in our fleet. We usually just try to do one a year to keep it rotating. Same concept, concept just at a lot less of a impact. Okay. And of course, uh, we got two hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars for the uh, uh, for the ladder track. That's which correct. Has already been discussed and already yes. been approved. Yeah, I think the first payment probably be around March, April 1st in that area, when the truck's delivered. A month after the truck is delivered, we make the first payment on that. Do we place the work order already on that? Yes, that's we ordered. Voted you. It's ordered. That's all uh, voted the sentence. Voted done, huh? It's ordered. Okay. All right, thank you so much, thank mm -hmm. you. Any, any, I'm sorry, anybody has Yeah, I've got a quick question. Uh, you touched on this, I remember, last year about replacing fire vehicles for the staff. Uh, every year or so, um, about 60,000 for the deputy chief or chief's vehicle or um, and you kind of touched on this one just briefly. So this vehicle, it's being replaced this year. It really has no outfit to it. It's just more for... Um, yeah, it just comes with the standard light package on it and stuff. We don't put any additional equipment in it, uh, except for the computer, which we already have. So we don't have to do, like, any tools or anything like that for this vehicle. Okay. So for this one, why would we need a, uh, a Tahoe? Like, couldn't we go with a Ford Explorer, or I'm sorry, a Ford Ranger, or a, a smaller um, Chevy truck for this position and not spend the 60000 on it? This, this vehicle comes with the police package that we've been going with. The same reason that Chief Cochin mentioned, we're getting uh, a good quality car this way, and it fits the needs of the department. Uh, the smaller cars, I don't believe, have the police package that we look for. So that's why we kind of are looking at this. We may try to do something uh, a little different once we get closer to ordering it, but we're looking at that option now. So don't take this the wrong way, please. No. Um, I mean, why couldn't you drive a Prius if this is just someone driving around to look at? Um, I mean, you've got zero gas usage on it. You're just driving around the businesses, making sure inspections are good. We're not going off-roading with it for any fires or anything along those lines. So. Um, in that aspect, I think that would almost be more prudent in this type of position, although it's not as cool of a vehicle to drive. Um, but it, I think it's more prudent on how you spend your money because we're also, I mean, as the commission has shown in the past, there's really been no, nothing held back for the fire department for vehicles and things along those lines. But if it's a vehicle that doesn't really need to be used as a fire vehicle, it's more of a transportation vehicle. And then some, uh, it, you could you can use it as calls occasionally to, to drive to the call or whatever it may be, right? But you're not actually using it for the call. Um, 
I don't I don't see the need for um, a tricked out Tahoe. The other thing you have to think about though, our vehicles are also used for emergency management. So a Prius is not gonna do very well during a hurricane when we have to get around town to get through things, either some high water, over debris and stuff like that. I'm afraid the Prius probably wouldn't last very long. Yeah, so that's kind of why we go with the Tahoe. But you didn't bring it up, so that's why I said I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What they're trying to get is why are you, why are you right. doing this vehicle? Not Again, we could take a golf car and go around and do things. We the could do it for that vehicles. fact, but I think we... They're not just administrative vehicles. You right. need to they, let the commission they, know the... They multi-purpose for us. Emergency management, they can get through some higher water and things like that. So that's why we kind of go with this Tahoe. That's fair. Sorry, I misunderstood. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, my next question is on the uh, transportation. Brick Street re reconstruction, I guess that will be Tom, right? Well, I think r let r Ron can explain. Ron explain that. This is something you've had in the budget and done for as long as I can remember. Well, it's, it's part of our annual program of the Brick Street and Road Re Reconstruction. Part of the money is funded out of the penny fund. The other part is funded out of the capital project fund. And this year, like I say, it totals 350000 for the Brick Street and Road Reconstruction program. Okay. Uh, are we doing Brick Street this year? Or are we doing are we doing the other paving this year? What do we do? This is Brick. Isn't this the Brick Street? Yes. It is. Okay. And of course, uh, Mr. Lecours, you're going to provide with priority list, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you for that. Any questions, anybody? Uh, not on that directly, but I have something on transportation. Of course, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first, Ron, just to go back a couple steps in terms of the vehicles and stuff, and I know that this is a question that gets asked probably every year as it relates to not only the sale of police vehicles, but other equipment that we you know, no longer have a need for and then wholesale out. Can you just give a brief explanation as to, you know, when the seven or eight police vehicles are sold that we're replacing, where that money then goes? Yeah, th yes, they're sold at auction and they go back into the fund that they were purchased from. Uh, most of the police and fire will go back into the general fund. Uh, if they're water and sewer vehicles, they'll go back into the water and sewer fund. Right. And then something else that's been asked uh, in the past is for the commission to uh, possibly see some form of a, a sale list or, a, or excuse me, a sale list when we sit, when we have these, like during budget cycle, like for 2019, how much money did we recoup in vehicles that we sold or equipment that we sold or generators or whatever, the heavy equipment? I think that's productive for, for us to see as we sit up here and say, okay, we're going to spend this every year and we're going to spend this every year and where does the money go on the vehicles or the equipment that's replaced? I know we ask that every year. But it would also be nice to know exactly how much money we're getting back and then how much is being contributed back into the general fund. Yes, we have a list on that, and we could provide that for you. That'd be great. I think that would okay. be helpful for all. Um, and then on the transportation side of the proposed CIP, the uh, Hibiscus Road and Stormwater Improvement, um, I went into the page 109 of the executive summary for the uh, penny fund. And I guess I'm curious why we're spending that money out of the penny fund and why we're not spending it out of, like, the roadway or, or the water and sewer fund. Uh, or the stormwater fund? Or? Yeah. Well, for one, the stormwater fund is pretty much the Pent Gross project is taking a good part of all the, 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 the funding available that would be available for that project. So that's why we've moved it to the uh, penny fund for that. If there is any water portion, we could charge it, but I don't know if there is any water and sewer portion. And it says uh, stormwater. Yeah, that would be the stormwater fund, but like I say, the, we're using most of that money for the Pent Gross project. And then can you direct my attention to that? I know I saw it in here, the Pent Gross project and the, that particular... Uh, are you looking for which page it's on? Or? Well, yeah, somewhere where I can see what kind of money is left in that stormwater account. I had it in front of me. Well, what is it, 112? So the, the grant... Page 112 has a stormwater fund. The grant... The Swift Mud grant for the Pent Gross is coming back at 1.3 and change, right? Correct. Okay, so that's not money we're spending, though. 
No, that's money that's going to offset the Pent Girls project. Right. So why are we budgeting for that as an expense and not as a, like a credit, I guess? Well, the expense on that page 112 is what's coming out of the stormwater fund is a two million four hundred thirty-six thousand eight hundred. Right. Up up above is the revenue that's coming in to offset that. Above is the revenue coming in to offset it. The, the two the almost three million in revenue, right? Correct. With the stormwater f uh, fees that are coming in, the one million six hundred sixteen thousand, and right below that, it's, it's a grant of one million three hundred sixty-eight thousand. And the Swift Mode grant is money that's coming back to the city, though, correct? Correct. So we spend it first, and then it comes back. Correct reimbursement. Okay. So when do when do you project we get reimbursed? Uh, as soon as they get the all the finaled up, uh, I would say it takes about a month, two months to get it back. Mm -hmm. So then that money would be would go back in, in the ending working capital would be plus a million three and change. So Correct, going back into the stormwater fund. Right. So. So if that happens, a couple, that happens after the completion, we Correct. get reimbursed. Correct. Okay. So that probably wouldn't be until whenever that project's completed. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So what I'm basically what I'm trying to get at is I just don't I don't like having to spend penny money for projects or work that there's other avenues for us to uh, fund those types of projects. So that's why I asked about the hibiscus uh, road and stormwater improvement. I mean, ideally, if it's me, I'd like to try and find, and could you elaborate on that project a little bit or somebody? I probably might have to get Tom to elaborate on that one. Good evening. Uh, yeah, that's a, a project that actually sits in the intersection of Hibiscus and Pine Street. There's a conflict with uh, some uh, water, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sanitary sewer. Uh, we found out over time at that line, and actually the roadway on Hibiscus floods right behind the, the Greek Center. We found that this area where there was a blockage, a pipe that actually went through a stormwater system uh, was interfering with those flows. Uh, so we're going to replace, we're going to put a conflict box inside the in intersection. At the same time, we're going to rebuild part of Hibiscus Street. It's all part of that same project. So let's just say from, you're saying behind the Greek church, I there's mean a, behind the community center. Yeah, there's a, there's a low section around, right. if you've been here, you've yeah, seen the storm center. Well, it has a tendency to flood, I think, yeah, I think you've seen, yeah. probably seen a hundred times. Well, well don't we, we do, have a stormwater pond right there on the corner of uh, Hibiscus? We, we do, but that Park? catch basin itself is actually a little bit lower than that, uh, that's, uh, that uh, uh, pond. You couldn't get the flow over there. So the flow actually runs down Hibiscus across Pine Street. Uh, it's down Hibiscus and ties into a storm system that goes out to where the exercise park is. But there's a conflict in the, in the middle of Pine Street that has to be opened up, and a conflict has to be put in there because you can't move the sanitary sewer system. So you had to put a conflict box in that section. Well, in the meantime, you're doing that, you're going to have to rebuild part of Hibiscus, too. Uh, so that's part of the project, too. Hmm. And there's no other funding source for this? Um, not right now. That's a better question for Ron. <coughs> I, just, I just asked him for money, and he gives it to me. So. <laughs> and um, what's your... Why do you feel like this project is necessary sooner rather than later? Uh, because of the amount of flooding we have in that one section. It affects everything. When that overflows and you have that pond along there, it has effect on those properties right in that intersection there. Plus, the road's starting to fail on, on Hibiscus, too. It needs that attention. Now, I'm pretty familiar with that stretch that you're talking about, mm -hmm. and I'm not exactly sure where you're saying the road's Failing. Hibiscus between Pine Street and down Athens Street is in, is, is in poor shape. Pine and Athens. Yeah. Okay. And so you're going to have to, when you put that conflict box in there, there's a manhole just on the uh, north side of Hibiscus. There's another manhole down about another 20 feet, and that all has to be changed out there. I got you. So, so you're going from Hibiscus, so you're going from Pine and Hibiscus north to uh, Athens. Yes. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I follow you better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you're saying that it has to be, be done sooner than later? It can't wait another year? Could you? Yes. I mean, because if yes. we wait, then we get a million three back from Swift Mud, and then then we can pull from it from another account versus from penny money. Uh, that's a decision you can make. I I could hold back. Just talking out yes. loud. I mean, right? Yeah. In theory, that's that's right. In theory, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I remember correctly, Tom, uh, mm -hmm. isn't there the place that we went that the house was flooded? Yeah, there was some flooding in that backyard. Yes. That's the uh, yes. Calodicus's house. Which is right behind the uh, uh, the community center. 
American. No, you're talking about north of the community center. Yeah, but there's a, where that catch basin that's is that's been backing up. Yeah, it, no, it affects that bowl in Hibiscus Street there at the, uh, I forget the name of the other street there, Cedar, not Cedar Street, but. Uh, no, it's, uh, Park, it's Park Street. Park Street, yes, I'm sorry, thank you. Yeah. Yes, it affects that there. Somehow the water is now flowing into the, uh, to the pond? I, to and me, the pond into the house is dead. I don't know, Mayor. I mean, I, I mean, I've been there. I've seen it. Me too. Yeah, Tom and I, we went. Sure. Yeah. That section will fill up in the roadway. It eventually does drain off eventually, but it does affect those properties right around that pond on Park Street in the backyards along there. I, I haven't seen that. I mean, I've seen, yeah. and, I, and I checked it because mm -hmm. recently we bought two houses on the corner of Hibiscus and Park. So I'm mm -hmm. like super familiar with what you're talking right. about. Yeah. And before we bought the houses, I checked to see if the stormwater retention that the city has on that corner worked as well as the Greek Church parking lot because it sits higher and will dump water yes. back, right? Yes. I mean, to me, they're both working there. Tom and I, we went in the right. first place. <laughs> and I can tell you, you know. You're, you're saying it's not working? Well, you know, it's not as good as it should be because if it was, the water would not go into the house. My thinking is just if we had the money back in the account, then we wouldn't have to pay point. for it out of yeah. any money. Mayor? That's my biggest thing. Yeah. So I'll throw it out to the board. Can I make a comment, Mayor? Sure. Um, looking at the, the projected stormwater fund at the end of the year after the Penn Street project, et cetera, there, there's a projected of 284000 And if I'm correct, this project on Hibiscus is only 120 and change. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be a simple just to move that over if we're projecting a balance at the end of the year. That's a Ron Herring question. That's a Ron Herring question, yeah. I'm just making a statement. I'm yeah. not. Well, I mean, okay. that's a good statement. So I want him to reply to why he doesn't, why he funded it there and didn't decide to fund it. So you're talking saying? about the stormwater fund on the bottom of page 112 there? Correct. Yep. 284000 left there. This project is not on, is it not part of this fund, just to, so I'm clear. It's part of the penny fund. I understand that. Yeah. That's the funding source. We're saying, why okay. can't it be paid? That's for? what he's saying. You mean out of the 284000 there? That's right. left, funded out of there. We have a fund balance policy. If we go much lower, we're going we're gonna to be below our fund balance policy, the 25% in the stormwater fund. So, I mean, yes, there is 284000 You, but... You might be in, you'd be in violation of the fund balance policy. What is that policy? Or I mean, what is that number right now? It, it's right around two hundred twenty-five thousand. Like I say, off the top of my head, I, sure. I think it's around. So that's sixty thousand dollars <laughs> or so, right? Yeah. Of uh, available funds. So yes, if there wasn't a fund balance policy, I'd say yes, we could charge it there. We may look at splitting it. Um, if this is a need to have to have it done, it's half and half. If it's half penny and half uh, stormwater fund, uh, if there's some available funds still. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I see where Vice Mayor is coming from this. It makes sense to me um, either to wait another year until next budget season or do half of it from the stormwater fund uh, it, as it looks like there's funds available still before you hit that threshold. So is this the same one too that was bid out? I think it was the expectation was it'd be bid around thirty-five thousand. It came back much higher than it, we uh, denied it earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, it's the same one. Yeah, that is correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Could I just say? I mean, if you wanted to move this project out another year, then it could. You do have the money in the stormwater fund in the following year, two thousand twenty-one. Yeah, there's eight hundred plus the, thousand, right? The, the, yeah. You have the money from the Swift Month. Right. Uh, Tom, what if, so, we, what if we gave partial funding to get engineering and whatnot going? Well, engineering's already been done on the project. We had it done the last time, an engineer uh, estimate, we put it in and it come up much higher than his estimate. That's why it's project ready and yes. if we find a ready. way, mm -hmm. another way to do it and do the project now. It's yeah, but then if you look at like the penny funds and all the other unfunded items that we're looking at here from um, good stuff on like Culture Center needing uh, exterior uh, painting, Heritage Museum and Stafford House painting. I mean, these are all things that it would deteriorate over time, right? Um, Renourishment of Sunset Beach and we could go into more details, but there's a plenty of penny funds that could be allocated right now for some of these other items. And don't get me wrong, stormwater is a very important aspect, but um, I think the Vice Mayor brought up a great point um, on how we fund this project. To me, penny money is just almost free money to do good things with. And if we have an account that we can spend infrastructure money out of, you know, for stormwater, that's what I'd rather do. 
even if it you know resorts to just partial funding of it out of the balance money that are, that's remaining. But you know, I don't think we should continue to just eat up our penny money with projects that can be funded elsewhere or slightly delayed. Um, and then, if it's all right, Mayor, I'll go into the extension of the Pinellas Trail as well. Sure, go ahead. So that would be a similar question. Why are we paying for that mm -hmm. out of penny money? And why are why is the county not contributing to that? Or are they? That goes way back. You want to tell the story of the... Ron, will you tell the story of our, of our trail fund? Or Bob Robertson want to come up and... We've already committed to do this. We've been... It's been in our budget for five years to do, or four years uh, because of an eagle block. And this is already a signed commitment of the city to do this. But if it's already in our budget, then why are we having to rebudget? It's been pushed out. It's been gotcha. Yeah, so that project is under design now, and the money that you're seeing in the budget is for construction that we are expecting to get to, when we get the design finished, go to construction next year. Give and a short been, version of the history of. Yeah, so um, let's see. A short version is this section of trail is being used right now um, to by the RO facility we have four water production wells in, in that corridor and we have the pipelines that connect it and in order to be able to do that we had to because we purchased that land with a state grant we had to reimburse the state and in an agreement agree to extend the trail through there um, when the funding was available funding is available as part of the penny um, we had to work out some issues with an eagle's nest that was present there uh, we've got those issues worked out and now we're in design um, so this is an obligation. This project is, is an obligation as part of the contract with the state. Yeah, the obligation to fulfill the project, not to pay for it out of penny. Correct. It could come from wherever you right. deem necessary, but the penny seemed like a good fund. Okay. Unless there's other thoughts. Mm -hmm. Where else would you generally pay for it out of penny manager? That work. The penny. And you say that's already gone out for bid, Bob? Well, no, sir. It's under design right now. So we're just we're budgeting that amount, but we don't really know what it exactly it would cost. That is correct. We don't have the engineer's estimate it? yet. How I'm big sorry? a stretch is it? A big stretch is about seventeen hundred feet. And it's this is connecting where the trail currently ends at at uh, the North Anklote Nature Park, mm -hmm. and we'll bring it all the way up to Anklote Boulevard, not Anklote Road. Um, and that will tie in where Pasco is bringing their North Coastal Trail in. So this is this is an integral piece to connect the Pinellas Trail to Pasco's new trail, which just now went under construction. So where does it cross uh, Alter 19 from Dixie? Right now we, we're preliminary looking and we're having DOT conversations with DOT about it crossing just north of Rainville Road. We can do a, um, uh, a center refuge with a, a built up curb in the uh, the right of way there's a wide section of road there that's where we're showing it right now and it goes along alter 19 to Anclote boulevard or it crosses on the railroad tracks and connects over there to l and r and then Anclote boulevard it, yes correct it crosses at the railroad tracks and then once it hits l and r industrial it'll go north to Anclote boulevard okay. cool we don't have any timetable on that right any time limit when project is, should be completed correct there's no time limit established no time limit. right now so I mean, that's something that I think is a, a worthy project to do sooner rather than later, but I just question the funding source as well. Well, it's only because it's been so long. This was decided to be paid for a year, year, in your budget. Again, Ron, do you have the answer for it? Look, it's at least been, this was budgeted from the penny fund to be paid for at least four years ago? Yes, it's been budgeted and rebudgeted. It's been ongoing, you know, like say for the last three or four years. And as far as funding source, uh, besides this, um, you know, you know, I think it would be the general fund or something. It doesn't qualify for impact fees, so that's why it's ending up in the penny fund. Just paying for Pinellas is a better place, a better fund for it. Yeah, I mean, the only thing would be like the parks and rec, but that's in general, right? Yeah. 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 The general fund. Yeah. What kind of money is in parks and recreation, just out of curiosity, available to spend on something like this? Uh, recreation impact. Would it qualify for recreation impact? I'd have to see what the deal, if it, if it is expanding and, and new capital growth, whether we're qualified, but I think currently in recreation impact, we have $147,000 after the projects we budgeted for 2020. And is there anything uh, ordinance-wise or 
Apache wise that requires us to keep X in that fund? No, there's no fund balance policy. The fund balance policies is just a general fund, water and sewer fund, sanitation fund, and stormwater fund. So we could take some out of parks impact or recreation impact? Yeah, if it will qualify for new capital growth, yes. Could you look into that for us? Yes. Is that right, Mr. Manning? Three minutes? Yeah, and there's a percent. What's the what's usually a percentage of impact you can do of the whole project? No, uh, no, the percentage. Yeah. Well, you can do a, the full, depending on the project. You could do the hundred percent. You know, if it qualifies. We can split it fifty-fifty, can we? Oh, correct. Yes. Yeah, especially if you don't have the funding here, you could split it. You know, between the penny and recreation impact. I think on those uh, two items that we talked about, the hibiscus and stormwater improvement and the extension of the Pinellas Trail, if we can figure out 50% uh, funding for, on both of those, that would free up, you know, approximately another 200 grand in penny money that I think would go a long way for this commission to try and do good things. Sure. So we, uh, that's going to be a follow-up, I guess, yes. right? Do we need to... Make any uh, consensus or motion on that or anything? Yeah, we need a consensus. You want to call for a consensus? Well, I, I had my hand up. To oh, oh, I didn't see you. <laughs> we need um, a light over here. You know? He's going to get his light when he gets a new uh, dias. He'll have a light thing. Uh, no, I agree. I, I feel like the Hibiscus Road stormwater um, improvement is, is necessary. We shouldn't wait on that. So, however, we can fund that if it can be 50 50. Okay. Um, and uh, also the extension of the trail we've been talking about that for so many years and and people are waiting for it and 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 wanting it completed so um yeah if we can get some uh funding um just without just having to use the penny fund that would be great so just to be clear well the 120,000 for the hibiscus road stormwater improvements the thought is we, we move it to the stormwater fund in 2021 out of 2020 in the penny we want to try to do it half and half no my thinking would be to not not move it because it not doesn't seem it. like we want to move it because it's a worthy project. But if we could use half, if we could get partial funding, sixty thousand from the stormwater fund, and fund it in part with half stormwater money, half capital improvement money, and then the same thing for the extension of the Pinellas Trail, half recreation impact, half cap, half uh, penny okay. money. Okay, I got gotcha. you. But not delay any of these. Yeah, but not okay. delay either one of them. Fund, keep it yeah. funded in twenty twenty. Sure. Just move <laughs> the money around. Is that right, Mayor? Mm -hmm. okay. That'll be good. All right. Everybody good with that? Uh, I've got a consensus here. Yeah. Let me see, Donovan. <laughs> consensus here. I'm good with it. Okay. I guess I have to speak up. I couldn't see you. <laughs> here, I've got one more comment just about transportation. Okay. <laughs> this, this so way. we good? This way. Well, just a comment about transportation. I'll help you, this way. Um, I'll help you that way. Yeah. <laughs> I can't help you that way, but I can help you this way. Um, I, I mean, it's this part of the three hundred fifty thousand dollars that's assigned to brick and road reconstruction is obviously one of the more important projects. I know all the projects are important across the city, but one of the things that you hear the most is when is my road going to be repaved? When's it going to be rebricked? It's a terrible road, et cetera. So uh, I think this is really going to go a long way. I know there's some great projects already going on that Tom's working with this, this year's fiscal year, um, and it's great to see that we have this these budgeted every year um, over year because it is such an important aspect for our residents. Um, and it gives a whole perception of the city, too. Um, so I'm encouraged This is about a that. program we have in for a while. We've been doing that for a while. And, uh, of course, the brick streets actually will take more maintenance than paving. So. Yeah, but the intent is But it looks so beautiful, yeah. though. You know, it's worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah, I guess if we're just doing it uh, kind of block by block, I, I have a comment on transportation as well. I just had a question about the sponge dock seawall engineering. Uh, the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I just want to know what that entailed, and if it was at all related to the flooding relief going on down there. No, no, no. This is uh, over the last number of years we've worked been uh, replacing the seawall down at Craig Park. It's the same program. Go to go down to docks before we do have issues with seawalls. Get engineering to to, to make assess, uh, assessments, and if there's something we have to pay prior right away, the monies are there. If not, then we could build that fund up. At least get that started now. Okay. Again, we're not sure of the amount, but yeah. we you know we know we need to evaluate that seawall yes. there and evaluate. What's the condition of it and how we need to slot into our times? We're, we're probably, we want to do that a year or so ago, but, yeah. you know, with all the projects and the dredging and stuff, it got put back. It really probably should have been done last year. 
Um, I have no idea. I've stopped predicting engineering work anymore, or the price and stuff. Hopefully that's a high price. Hopefully it's going to come. But, but we need a full analysis of our area, the docks and that wall and a full examination of what needs to be done and when so we don't have the caving in that we had down at the park and do. Um, so, again, that's just, again, hopefully it'll be less, but that's just to cover because it's, it's necessary for us to maintain that wall and see what conditions it's in. Okay. And that's just strictly repair, right? We're not modifying it. We're not extending no, the seawall. That's it's just, just repair, yeah. Yes. Okay, because mm -hmm. I know that that was that's a lot of um, the boats down there are just concerned about, especially yeah. without the dredging right now, about their ability to even turn around or and get out and stuff like that. And so. again, we don't know what we're going to find under there too. So I, who you know, we'll have a whole game plan of what we find uh, of that wall. So hopefully, there's not major work we have to do in the future. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Lequeurs. Do we have a main, uh, maintenance program to uh, go periodically and uh, evaluate the seawall? Yes, we've got so much going on. Yes. Yeah, we, we started a program on the seawalls well, probably been 2005, 2006, <clears throat> when we did the original engineering work on there, and we do monitor the conditions. <clears throat> and every so often, you know, we know we have planned areas, so the seawall Cray Park is, is, is probably about 80% done. Some other work has to be done, but uh, we want to take that same program and put it to the seawalls down there. We, believe, we feel they're pretty safe. We walk them all the time. I have gentlemen down there all, uh, right now. Know, working there all the time, but we just want to make sure we're ahead of the curve, and it's just preliminary engineering to get it started. So if something does come up, at least we're we're ready for it. Thank you. We should see what you got in front of transportation. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody's good with transportation. I'd like to go to uh, page number eight and some of those projects that we have for the water and sewer and reclaim. Uh, the uh, number one is the sea breeze drive uh, construction. <coughs> In this project, is that including um, the sewer lines installation and uh, <clears throat> and road repair, or are we just doing the uh, just doing the piping? Well, it'll be a complete project. Uh, Paul Smith, Public Services Director, <coughs> and whatever restoration needs to be done to the surface following construction will be part of that project. Okay. Uh, wasn't the concern down there by Riverside Drive as well? Is that been completed? I'm um, not sure which what you're referring On to. On Circle Drive, is that going to be part of the project? No, this is strictly for Seabreeze Drive. Sea Drive. It's going to include a, a new collection system and a new pump station to bring it back out to the existing force main on Riverside Drive. Yeah. If I remember correctly, the, uh, the Circle Drive, that was also a concern with that, being that it's right on the water. Is, that's going to be a different project, or this is for a different time, or...? That's that would be, be included into that. Yes, that'd be part of some other sewer infill project we would do. Okay. Okay. Any any questions on this project, Vice Mayor? Not on the, this project, but in the the page that you're on. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, right below the future raw water wells for 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. I was hoping somebody could elaborate on that a little bit. Yes, I think we're uh, we'll find it here. Yeah, future raw water wells. What this project involves is bringing new water sources to the RO facility. And what we're finding is in the northern, north of the river, where our well sites would be, it's um, really running out of available land to put more well sites. So we're looking at all of our options. And the one that's looking best to us right now is bringing the existing freshwater sources we have down on Distant Avenue and the other well sites up to the RO plant so that we have one source of water, a fresher source of water that can be treated by the facility and sent out in a uniform manner, rather than adding water into the system from these individual sites. We'll get a lot more water as a result, and it'll help the overall product be more consistent. So right now, that's really a pipeline and connection type project that we're looking at, and uh, we put it as a high priority. So walk me through that a little bit, Paul. We're basically we're going away from the single source uh, well, more so to, to a pipeline 
Well, yeah, I don't want to say going away from it. We're still looking for sites, and if we find them, we'll uh, work with those property owners to get them and, and, and build a well and connect it up. But that right now, this is looking like the most expedient way to bring more supply to the RO facility. And that's through how, again, you're going to run a pipeline from yes, North Yes, we're looking at Avenue. different techniques like directional underground drilling so that you minimize the disruption to the surface, but it's going to be quite a project, and we're working through how that would all go together right now. So this 1.4 is just a rough estimate? That, that's correct, yeah. If it, then why do we need it in this year's budget then? Well, um, you know, we're talking about coming up in October, and typically we'd work through our design for maybe four to six months. This could move pretty quickly once we get to that point. So we wanted to reserve it so that if we are able to get it started, even if it's August or September, a year from now, we're still able to do that rather than waiting. So give me a little bit more detail as to the project from North Distant Avenue somewhere. You're going to pick up what kind of material, freshwater material? Well, we've got existing wells on Distant Avenue that aren't being used to their full capabilities because right. they need further treatment. So we would come in with some sort of directional drill pipe, say 8-inch diameter, and bring it up across probably along 19. We have to go underneath the river to do that and then bring it into the RO facility at the nearest raw water connection point. So like around Distant and Live Oak is what you're talking about? Well, that would be the, the southern end of it, yes, but then as you cross the river up along 19, U.S. 19, uh -huh. and then um, come in, we've got some freshwater or raw water well pipes that extend out towards 19 that we could tie into so we don't have to run it all the way to the plant. So we'll be looking at ways to minimize how much pipe we need to install to the get raw it. water supply we already have. Yes, and permitted. Gotcha. And those uh, valves that we would pick up, we would pick up from wherever they are and then run a pipeline somewhere under the river under alternate 19 and to the RO plant, is that right? Yeah, well, we'd go uh, up the river and come over to the west and come into some of the raw water wells that we have up in that area already and oh, tie right. into one of those larger pipes. Gotcha. Are you going to need an additional pump to push the water? Because you've got quite a bit of distance, right? It's a good question, Mayor, and that'll be part of the design. Yes, we'll probably need to add some more energy at the well source to get that enough pressure to move it up to the facility, but it won't need to be as high a pressure as you would for a distribution system. So you're right. We probably need to add a bigger motor, a little more horsepower to get it up there. And this project's being funded through the Water and Sewer Fund? And that's correct, yeah. Um, do you have any idea what the increase in treated water will be once this is hooked up? It really depends on how many of these wells we can reach, but I could see it being six or 700,000 gallons a day, which is substantial. And how much is generated now? Well, we're producing about 3.2, and what we really want is more options because right now we're using everything we've got we're meeting our demands okay, but we really don't have a lot of extra capacity, which you really want that, to be able to rotate your wells, optimize your operation. So right now, this is our best approach. This is money we've planned for to add to our supply, but we're seeing our approach has to change a little based on our availability to find new wells. How many wells do we have now? I believe it's 16 or 17, Bob. 17. Our original plan was up to 22. we got ways to go, huh? Yeah. So what we're doing, we have a plan, we have some kind of a looking for different places to uh, install more wells or? More piping. More yes. Piping. In fact, we're in the middle of negotiating the scope to nail down this pipe alternative more clearly with a cost estimate and that sort of thing. But this is our best estimate of what the magnitude of the cost would be based on some other pipeline work we've seen bid in the city and occurring. I think we consulted our engineers as well for a rough estimate. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Ms. Ida? I know it's probably hard to create an average, Paul, but what do you, say, what do you think the average cost is per existing well? Mm -hmm. Oh, page, yeah. Uh, if you 
take the land part into effect. I mean, probably 70,000 for a well site um, and maybe another 150,000 to drill the well. So you're quarter million, 300,000 a piece perhaps. Per site? Per well. Gotcha. And that's just rough, I mean. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you prefer this route versus using the 1.4 and selecting however many more well sites, seven, right? Yeah, and I, I can say we've been working steadily sites. on getting more well sites for, for probably over five years. And you gotta reach a point where you say, we, we gotta look at some other alternatives right. as well. <laughs> gotcha, thank you. The next item there is the uh, packet bridge utility. Is that what you have? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious about the Beckett Bridge utility replacement. Uh, I just want to know how it correlated to the county project that was going on with the bridge or if we could possibly make the timing the same so it's less intrusive. Yeah, that's one of Bob's projects. He's got a lot of depth on that. So I'm gonna... All right, thanks. Yeah, uh, Commissioner, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Um, the, the county approached us and let us know they had this project, and so we had to initiate the, the design on re relocating um, a, a wastewater sanitary force main and a potable water pipe that were in the uh, bridge right away. Mm -hmm. So we began work on the design, and that is underway now. Uh, what you see there is the cost associated with the actual physical relocation, a horizontal directional drill. So what we would wind up doing is um, piggybacking a contract on and I probably shouldn't use that term, but we would use a little interlocal agreement so that the county's contractor would do the work. So we're not having two different contractors doing it. That's yeah. typically how you do these jobs. Um, and that's what this would be for. So that it would it would exactly, just as you're asking, dovetail exactly with their construction. Okay. So by the time they were done with that, we'd also be done with this. It's the same thing. Right. Or the work's so going to be done at the same there time. Were, it'll all be one seamless project okay and the good news is it looks like we found a way to get the piping out of the bridge right away so if for whatever reason 50 years later they've got to do another adjustment or mm -hmm. whatever we're out of the way and we don't have to uh, do it again where is it where is the, the like where's it going oh um, possibly to the north of the yacht club there is um, there's some right away there that we mm -hmm. we think we can use okay. we'll have to uh, we're doing some analysis now to see if it's feasible but if it is we're, we're, we're going to try to get out of the bridge right away okay Thank you. Well, yes, sir. this project being that uh, it's a county project and it's going to cost us $834,000, are we going to be reimbursed by the county? No, sir. Why not? Because our utilities are in county right away, so it is our obligation to relocate our facilities out of, the, out of their project, just as we would require any, uh, any other utility to relocate in our rights of way. Even though that they're initiating the project? That's correct. Mr. <coughs> Nicole. I don't have a comment on this project specifically. Uh, I just want to bring up the water pipe and valve replacement, similar to my comment earlier about the roads. Uh, this is such an important aspect um, because it's a, just a perception aspect. I think this is something that should be highlighted on top of the water bill when we receive it, that these funds are being placed almost half a million dollars in this budget year to replace water pipes that are running to residential homes. Uh, to continue the water quality because Tarpon Springs has been awarded multiple times one of the top water plants in the state. Um, but it's good to, to let the residents know that also the infrastructure that goes from the water plant to their homes are being updated as well to make sure the quality is all the way there. And by the way, this is a great list of product, um, a great list of projects that I think should also be um, highlighted in the quarterly update and the um, water bill that's sent out. This was uh, just so the residents know when they're paying those water bills and they see the storm water and water and sewer fees, what the projects are actually going towards. So, um, again, I'm encouraged to see the, the water pipe and valve replacement with those amount of funds set aside for that those projects. Again, just the same page. Same page. Sure, go ahead. Uh, this is on the GIS improvements. It's listed under. IT actually on page 98 in our executive summary. So I don't really know who can answer the GIS improvement question. Uh, I just want to know exactly what it entailed and if there's an existing GIS system we can kind of just piggyback off of. Um, I'll start with a general explanation and then if you need more detail from Suzanne. Uh, we work very closely with IT uh, to keep our um, GIS system up to date. We've made a lot of progress over the last several years and yes we do have an existing system we're able to access it online, and um, we use it regularly in our work to make sure 
the information we're giving to the public, the work that we do, that we're considering what's already in the ground. It even helps us in emergencies to know where the valves are, especially over the time when dirt and things cover up valves and we don't see them. Mm -hmm. We can pull this up on a tablet. That actually happened not too long ago and say, oh, wait, there's one over here. Walk over and move the dirt with your foot, and there it is. I mean, it's pretty fantastic technology. Yeah. So um, this money is part of a regular schedule for keeping our equipment up to date. This includes the equipment that they use in the field to locate things and then transmit them back to the office to put into the system, but also tablets and those sorts of things that they use in the field to look at the data. Okay. So this won't affect like staffing at all. This is all strictly for equipment? The equipment, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Smith, right above that is the uh, meter repair and change out. This is a great program. We do that every year. And this year we're going to spend $125,000. Are we getting close to finish with this project? Because we've been doing that for a while, but it's very, very helpful, especially when we have a concern from a customer that they have a water leak. Automatically, you find out exactly what the problem is and you solve it. Yes. Uh, are we getting close to finish this project? Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your patience. Yes, we are working our way through this project. I, the latest estimate I have from staff is about 70% complete. And um, understand some cities will just pay a tremendous, I mean, millions of dollars to bring a contractor in and do this. And this is one of the jobs we thought we could do sort of part-time, part -time. you know, as we're doing our other work, replacing these meters. And it's been effective for us, but yes, it does take longer, certainly does. So uh, each year we're keeping that progress up. We're doing it on a prioritized basis. We work with the utility billing staff to say what, which ones are giving you trouble which meters are failing a lot, let's go do that street. So it's really um, a working with them closely to get the best results with the money. But you're right, those meters do um, really it pay works. a benefit back when we can do diagnostics on water use and help a customer figure out why their bill might be high, and particularly to help save some water. Yeah, I had to use the benefit several times. That was good. Thank you. Any other questions on this page? I have one from the page of four. But I'm not sure if you want to go back to that or not. Yeah. We'll go ahead. Yeah, uh, city manager gone. I'm not sure who could answer this one. So Exercise Park has um, two pickleball courts and two shuffleboard courts. Um, and I know, I think Ron discussed that there's $120,000 that would be available after the proposed budget is used um, or if it is approved. To, I'm not super familiar with pickleball courts and I'm extremely familiar with shuffleboard courts. Um, just not really sure if there's a demand for shuffleboard courts based on the usages in Craig Park and also $75,000 for pickleball courts that potentially could be used for the trail extension. Maybe a better use of funds this year and wait until the following year if this is still a demand because I'd like to see some more um, I guess statistics or uh, a true demand for pickleball courts and additional shuffleboard courts before close to $100,000 is spent on this project. Um, as a whole, I think the, the extension of the trail is about 270000 So that could help fund that aspect. And from a recreation standpoint, there's also the, the part of um, needing to extend the floating dock in Craig Park um, I've got some questions about Highland Park and also the need for additional boat ramps around Tarpon Springs. Um, so, If I may add some information about your sure. question about the shuffleboard and the pickleball courts. I, I also participate in the Parks Rec Advisory Board meetings and um, they provide their input and research to us. And I will say from my own knowledge with staff at the, at the community center, the pickleball is exploding in popularity to the point we have the in, indoor at the gym and we have to cut back on the number of days that they request to allow other programs to happen. So this was a recommendation of our Parks Rec Advisory Board to do some outdoor courts. Uh, we're gonna be looking at doing it in-house with Tom Funchen's group to keep the cost to a minimum. Um, and it would be over at that um, south parcel there, which is uh, south of the dog park and that area where the exercise equipment is, that would be the area where those courts would go. Is there lighting that's going to be involved with that, or is it just daytime use, you know? I think initially no lighting. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah. 
just keep the cost down. Regarding the shuffleboard, we do have a group that's been regularly asking us about rehabbing the ones at Craig Park. This idea is to put the shuffleboard courts perhaps at this other location so that that would free up more opportunities at Craig Park for other plans. So there is, a, there is an interest in, in shuffleboard, um, and so that's what prompted that. I'm not against shuffleboard. I just knew we had uh, adamant or a, a tremendous amount of shuffleboard courts around the city of Tarpon Springs already. So um, if this is foresight for some other projects, and I, I understand. Uh, from a recreation standpoint, though, um, something that's been brought up, and maybe this falls under under um, another category, so correct me if I'm speaking out of turn, if it falls under parks. Um, the floating dock, I've had people that are residents that use the the boat ramp in Craig Park, and I brought it up the past couple of years about the, the floating dock not really being big enough um, for the amount of traffic that comes and goes uh, to tie up the boats, and that there's just not enough space to tie up on the floating dock. So that'd be an area that I think that should be addressed of just adding in a couple additional sections to the floating dock. And then um, j the parks is funded separately from the recreation. Am I correct on that? Is, is parks and recreation now the same fund with this or is this there are two separate funds? Are you talking about the, the pickleball courts or? just in general i mean so let's got, say sunset beach for example we had a project that were beach re renourishment you know it's either out of, the, out of the penny fund for that okay what about the playgrounds <laughs> would that that would fall into recreation i think oh just it's not up in there. general it's That's not up there now uh, it depends you know if you want it out of the penny fund or out of the recreation okay. impact fund fair enough uh it, I know there's a couple of unfunded items in the parks and recreation that we could get into more details, but I, there's two things that I think are really important to Tarpon Springs. One is the Sunset Beach sand re replenishment. Um, when you're out there, there's just a lot of small rocks, and the beach sand is getting pretty rough. Uh, and that being one of the big attractions of Tarpon Springs, especially the residents going there, because our county officials and uh, have decided to continue to charge for parking at Fred Howard Beach. So we're gonna have more demand at Sunset Beach. Uh, with that, it, it makes sense, I think, to replenish that as often as we can and try to grade out as much of the rocks as we can out of there as well. And then when you're looking at the city-wide playground rehab, um, I haven't played on any playground equipment lately, but if there's a need to rehab any of it, I think it's important that we rehab it as soon as, like, any time it comes up because it's such an important thing to make sure kids are out playing, uh, out in the environment, um, and out in the parks. Uh, City Manager, if you could uh, just help highlight one other thing. Highland Park, I know that came up for discussion. Was that funded for the 2019 fiscal year, or is that something that's been on, put on hold? Uh, as far as I know, it's on hold. I don't think we... I don't think, Ron, we have it. We've, we've got a hold on that, right? On hold, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what about the funds? The funds were allocated in 2019 or put no. aside? Okay. So are we going to be doing any updates in Highland Park then this fiscal year, or is it just going to be sitting as is? Am I correct in the way this reads? Right now we're looking for options. We're in, we're in the process now of surveying the residents and seeing what the residents would like to see and then finding that and, and bringing that back. Is it the residents of that area, yes. of the neighborhoods? Yeah. Okay. I just know there's a, um, from, I mean, if it's additional, well, I know it's a long time coming. It's a park that's been neglected for quite some time. And so anytime we could put some additional funds there and get some projects going, I'm not sure what it may be. Um, if it's at least a, a better walkway out to the dock and the lake, I mean, that could be a start, right? So that's right now what we're looking at. More of the things that we can do with our equipment and our personnel now, um, you know, maybe some small amenity but mostly that's what we're looking at now and we've done a lot of work clearing clearing the brush and that sort of thing um the dock is in better shape than we thought it was so there's not major repairs that need to be made to the dock so right now we're just looking at um some different things that we could possibly do with our crews and and, and make it better or something real real low cost sure and i know uh, a lot of the residents that back up to the park um they really did like the um the foliage that was there so if there's additional cedar pond or cedar trees that we could put in to help buffer between the people running around the park and that the would houses. be tree fun where we have money to we're able to do that without affecting anything with your budget. sure yeah 
But those are things we're looking at now, more of those things like you talk about instead of some of the budgetary items we were looking at. Okay. And a boat ramp, I think, is an additional necessity. I'm not sure where that could be, if it's there's a spot over by the Splash Park anywhere, or if there's any other areas to help expand parking, if it's out by Sunset Beach, et cetera. Um, that's an important part um, of that. And I could touch later on that, on some of the $800,000 that could be potentially used for other projects. Just we're talking about recreation, Mr. LeCurtis, the uh, tennis court on Riverside Drive is getting to be in very bad shape. Any plans for that? Yes. Tom, you want to tell what you've recently <laughs> looked at and what we plan to do? <clears throat> yeah, good evening. Uh, yeah, we were at the uh, process now of uh, no, uh, finish up an evaluation on the deck over there. We, we believe we can redo the deck. And then this year we're going to replace the fencing around it. Uh, we do have a few more lights we have to put in. We put it in house. I think we got like three or four more lights on the east side of the, uh, the tennis courts. But hopefully in the next six months or so that would be up in pretty good shape. Tom, constantly we get new cracks on on the uh, on the court. Is mm -hmm. that because of the the base is not holding uh, up or what? Uh, no, the base it's been there for a number of years. What we have to do is uh, we have. We've talked to a couple of different contractors that actually do this kind of work, and we looked at possibly taking up the whole deck and replacing the deck and pouring our own deck, and then they come back and put a finish on it. But we found out from another gentleman on how they're using a different type of product on top of it. It's a mesh that we can put over the existing one, put that mesh down, and then resurface it at probably half the cost of what replacing the whole deck is. Uh, we had a conversation with him actually the other day, so we're working on getting some stuff together on that, getting a price on it, and hopefully go that route. And then once that's done, then we'll replace the fence. Because right. that's that's definitely in dire need. We just did do some, uh, also finished up some drainage work back there. We had some drainage work on the hill we completed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that was my, one of my questions. Is a time frame? So you're thinking in about six months that that could be completed. probably somewhere in that neighborhood, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to say, make a couple of comments on what uh, Commissioner uh, Carr said. Um, as far as the the playground equipment. I do go to the playgrounds with my granddaughter. Uh, I think y'all have been doing a great job as, at, with keeping up and, and rehabbing the equipment. Uh, this past year, you have done a lot of work uh, in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, that's always something that we need to keep up with. Yes. And for the beach, sand replenishment. Um, I talked to Bob, I don't know where he is right now. When we do the, uh, the dredge about possibly using uh, what's collected to, for Sunset Beach, which I know that we really need to replenish that beach and, as you were saying, remove the rocks, but um, we talked about the possibility of using some of that, uh, whatever we you know, collect, uh, that can be yeah, used. If they can be used. Uh, I, I know yeah. I usually do a, a beach replacement in, in the fall once we get through the, the hurricane season. Right. Uh, so I mean, that's down the road, the but anyway, that was an idea. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Mr. Bell? Um, yeah, again, sorry for bouncing around here, um, but on the exercise park for the shuffleboard courts, um, again, I, I get it if we're replacing those, um, if we're planning to put something new in the Craig Park, but do we have any idea what that new thing might be? I just don't feel comfortable funding something that's going to replace something that we don't have any plans to, to be replaced. Well, there's several ideas, and that's something we'd have to come across when we decide a whole plan on what we want to do there's a plan to to assist as you say with the boat ramp and the parking thing there's two trains of thoughts to utilize that area to increase um the efficiency of the boat ramp and stuff and the other idea is to make more green space so you've got two sides that are passionate about mm -hmm. about two different things and so and that would be a board's decision but the two things maybe there's a third one out there but the two things everybody talking about is just more green space with those out there the concrete you got now that's that's not used for green space or to use that to, to assist with the problem with boat trailers on a plan that we had talked about bringing forward in the future uh, of there. Um, so those would be the, the two things that you would utilize that for. The two okay. drug things. Or, is uh, there may that, be more, but that's the two things that's been talk about, talked that, about. Is that coming up soon, though? Yeah. Like on an agenda within the next few months? Okay. I just didn't want to fund something if it was just going to sit there and then we'd have so many shuffleboard courts because whenever I'm out at Craig Park right now, um, there's nobody out there using them. Uh, and then secondly, as far as the dredging goes, uh, possibly using their sand, I, I think, I, I don't know if it's been planned out yet, 
But isn't it possible? And again, I think this might be a, a good question for um, your back, Bob, because I had asked about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to know because because typically doesn't it work how the contractor might use like a hydrocyclone dredge and they might just pump it right on Anclote Beach. I know that was floated around when it first happened and they'd pump it into into a hydrocyclone right on Anclote Beach and then they'd put it all all the clean sand right there. Uh, right there and then, and they'd be able to do that. Have we made any determination of that? Because if it's all going to go to Anclote Beach, then we can't count on that sand. Um, well, what they have determined is they can't go to the, the Anclote Park mm -hmm. for the materials there. There's a cultural resources issue there, so um, can't use that park. But uh, the majority of the uh, materials is going to go to the Upland site um, that we've already determined, uh, the site that we've already used previously, um, north on Eleanor Industrial. Um, there may still be a possibility to use some of the materials that are dredged in the outer cuts mm -hmm. um, at, at Sunset Beach for renourishment, but at this point, that's not determined yet. Okay. Thanks. Who will make the final decision? Is that the Army Corps of Engineering? Yes, that would be the U.S. Army Corps. Yeah. And I have suggested that as an option to them, so I, I know they are considering that. Vice Mayor Terrapin. Thank you. Uh, just to to finish up or follow up on the exercise park, um, I'd be in favor of just not funding the shuffleboard courts tonight. Um, I don't see anybody use them. I mean, the pickleboard courts, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, I'm not a pickleball guy, but I see it coming on like like crazy. I mean, I see it's it. It's been very popular. I mean, I have people asking me about real estate to, to build pickleball courts from like a private side. So it, there must be some money and there must be people doing it. I actually. I saw where it's being offered at, uh, not Cypress Run, but the one across the street. Crescent Oaks. Yeah, yeah Crescent Oaks has them now. So, the so big. I mean, the pickleball, co call, pickleball court thing, I think, is a good idea. But the shuffleball ball courts, I mean, to me, I'm in favor of just not even funding that for, for that particular location. Not and to we mention, can immediately move that to, the fifth, there's 15,000 to wreck impact fees for the trail. There's our start. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I mean that's why we're, this is what we're here to do. Yeah. So... I'm okay with defunding that and putting it towards the trailer or whatever else we see fit. Um, the uh, restroom entryway, can somebody tell me how we spend five grand on that? Yeah, uh, it's actually from the uh, rec building in Craig Park to access the restrooms. Uh, a lot of times they have events in the evenings in there uh, after nine o'clock when the restrooms close. And that way they can use it for private uh, parties and or private events or whatever Craig has going in that building to access the restrooms. So the bathrooms in Craig Park? They're only accessible from the outside, right. not accessible from inside. So you're saying that this will do what? We'll open the doorways inside so they can ac access it from inside the building to go into the restrooms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes they have e evening events on the, out there. Classes. Classes that and will... things like that. That will be more secure. Much more It'll secure, yes, sir. Handle the door locks. I mean, every, I mean, it's labeled entryway. Yes. So that makes me think like five thousand dollars on a sign. Yeah, it could have been different one, but yeah, it's it's access. I have restroom access. Yeah. Okay, so that covers locks and all that. Yes, right? yes, sir. Okay, and are they magnetic locks? Uh, that's what we like to put on there. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, those are you know some of the things on the un unfunded items. I think. At a certain point, we should go over since we're freeing up a little bit of funding tonight. Maybe there's some things on there, there that we could select from. There are some items that I like to talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah when... Are we finished with the uh, recreation? Anybody? Uh, I, I have one more comment. Sure. Um, actually, yeah. With with the recreation, sorry, I, I am finished with the recreation. Oh, uh, you done with that? Yeah, I'm. I'm good on the recreation, but not with uh, okay. all the capital. Uh, we did finish with the uh, war and sewer. And reclaim, right? Anybody has anything else on that? I'd like to go to the uh, the unfunded uh, the um, restrooms downtown and down at the docks, magnetic locks, ten thousand dollars. Can you? Is that a safety concern that we need to uh, to work? That is also one we're hoping we have enough money as we leave in this budget. That was one of the things we've got identified that hopefully we have as we balance the budget out that we may that we have the money in there to do that. Mm -hmm. That's part of a single page you're talking about. 
Yeah. <laughs> I got that on so, the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Uh, say the what the exact was the exact question again. He, he's whole, he, he's yeah. wondering about the funding of electric lock the locks. Yeah, but, is that something that's going to provide more safety or security? Who is that? More security, yes. Uh, once in a while, some of the locks down there have them get tendency to not have to get jimmied, mm -hmm. uh, broken into. So this will make it a little more secure. Uh, hopefully, cut down some vandalism we have on occasion. And that's only ten thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I think that's something we should be done. If well, safe. Again, I think we're going to be able to do it within you know? within yes. the money we have left in this year's budget to go ahead and okay. do that. Uh, another item that I'd like to uh, discuss is the uh, the culture center, the plaster repair and painting interior, $25,000, and also the uh, exterior light. You know, we're spending a lot of money to uh, to redo the, uh, the culture center, which yes. is a beautiful building, <clears throat> a historical building. Yeah, and I think we ought to finish it and, and complete the whole thing. Just better go back to it. Yeah? Yeah. One more thing? Or? Bob, you want to say? Or Bob, you? The better speaker than I am anyway. Well, I don't, um, Tom, I don't know the nature, full nature of this project, but I can say that we are trying to get their plaster repair done under the existing renovations now. Um, this contractor is doing a good job. They have not come to us with a lot of change orders. So we get to the end of the project and we have fun money left under the contingency. I'd like to try to include, and we're, we've already asked them to provide a quote for the services to do the plaster repair, particularly in the uh, second level where you can see the, basically see the wall through that, where it's fallen through. So we're trying to do that part now, at least that part. I don't know about the, the painting, Tom, but uh, if that was supposed to be an extensive interior painting project or no, it's not in, no it's that one room the up in the southwest so it's corner. the same room same room we'll do the we can do that in house easy enough. okay so if we can't fit that in we'll what okay. about the exterior lights Bob? exterior Ex exterior lights for uh for the culture center that's not something to have in this project they now they want to add some exterior lights and entrance and the exits on both sides of the building over here i light up a little bit better because it's kind of hard to see sometimes at night yeah yeah that'd have to be a separate project Separate project, yeah. I like to see the whole project completed. You know, we spend a lot of money on it. And this is a historical building. I think uh, it should be completed if I have the consent of the board. So it sounds like what they're saying is the plaster repair and painting is already going to be taken care of. Yeah. So if we just spend light. an extra five grand on exterior lighting light, yeah. and get it done with it. Well, I mean, I just, you know my feeling. I want to be able to utilize the cultural center more so now than yeah. ever. Which, <coughs> why wouldn't we? So. I'm good to spend more money there. I just want to make sure that we use it. Yeah. I'm in favor of the exterior lights. I think the most important thing is that you make sure that the lights are actually, if they're at the entranceways, if they're within the fixture itself, instead of just having a light that's just throwing light all over the place, um, similar to what you've seen in kind of the old-fashioned lights around town, right? Yeah. Um, so you really are capturing, you're being directive of the light where it's going instead of just light pollution all over the place. Uh, while we're talking about lighting, though, too, it would be good to see some type of up lighting up against the building as well at night. So um, landscape lighting is not that expensive uh, at all, actually, for some LED lights. We you could probably cover that all in the exterior lighting. Yeah, you could probably do that for less than a thousand bucks, I would think, uh, for the whole building. But you understand what I'm talking about, right? Some up lighting up against yes. the building because it really gives a whole aesthetic to the brick building. You see it better at night. Uh, it just gives a much better look to it, too, as well. So I'll, I can definitely support that one, Mayor, as well. Cheaper. I agree. You agree? You need some time. You got consensus from me. I'm good with that. Okay. Anything else on this page? Number 12? I've got one from before that, actually. Yeah, we, if, which if, one? The capital outlay, fiscal year 2020. It just It's just broken out um, some different capital improvement projects. It talks about computers and some other things. Okay, sure. uh, <laughs> the one I have a question about is on page 11. Okay. It's the land preservation fund, future approved land purchases. I'm not familiar with this, so. Okay. <laughs> Someone can uh, elaborate on this a little bit further. Yeah, that's a land preservation fund. There's no. It's it's just a placeholder in case there are any land purchases come up and stuff. Basically, what it was is he wanted to take a percentage of any time we sold something and put it towards future funds for. Recreation purposes. So is it like, uh, for instance, Sisler Field, when that uh, building was purchased and torn down for additional parking, would that be a good example of what that potentially could be used for? 
Right. It, it, yeah, it's based on recreation and conservation purposes is what it can be used for. And basically there's $48,000 left in that fund. Okay. All right. Thanks for clarifying that. Uh, a couple things too, just want to touch base on, um, <laughs> I mean, it sounds silly, but uh, the double dumpster corral out at the splash park. Uh, this is something with the city's looking at doing this. These are these are sore sites, although they cover up a sore site of a dumpster. They're still a pretty sore site um, overall as well. So I think if we the city um, manager could work with the public arts committee, um, and that be one of the dumpster corrals that we look at, um, along with Sunset Beach and the golf course in Sisler Field. Um, that we could do some type of um, mural with a local college student or local high schooler that we could have some type of competition to do that based on past discussions. Uh, upgraded trash containers at the parks, uh, that's a significant amount of money, but I do support it because it's important that we have um, attractive trash cans. Again, it's the details that really make the difference in the way people feel about our parks and our town overall. Uh, so I do support that as well. And let me just check one more thing. Uh, there's a new shed. It talks about the solid waste. I think, Tom, can you help out with that one to let me know what that's about? It's $20,000 for a shed. <laughs> Sorry, let me get, get my mind up over here. Yeah, that's for uh, putting our supplies in. We need a new Kubota vest for that. Uh, so we'll be able to put the, uh, the stuff in storage and pretty much keep it out of the weather when we can. And then, of course, we keep extra cans in there, uh, extra supplies. Uh, our space now is limited, so. Okay, so it's basically a garage and for the tractor, right? Before. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, thank you, Commissioner Carr. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I have some additional information on the Land Preservation Fund. Um, I actually wrote down exactly what it says in uh, writing about the Land Preservation Fund before our meeting. So the purpose of this fund is to acquire land within the city that is suitable for preservation, open space, or park. So the forty-eight thousand you see right there, um, I believe, is is pretty pretty underutilized because the purpose behind the land preservation fund originally um, was was actually to kind of sidestep some of the environmental issues we get into um, with with property rights and that sort of thing, and use land for preservation within the city because so many problems we have with new development and stuff like that is, well, they have property rights, they own this land, is this really government's role to jump in here and say whether they can or cannot build this. Um, so the Land Preservation Fund is, is good for the city, I believe anyway, um, just because the Land Preservation Fund would take a portion of um, you know, land sale, and as that would add up, that 48000 would eventually ideally add up to a purchasing number where the city could buy land, and they would be able to use that land strictly for exactly what I said, preservation, open space, or a park. So that includes, you know, uh, in theory, buying uh, an acre of land and just never touching it. Um, the city could just say this land is just natural Florida land. We're going to leave it. We're never going to do anything with it. And we buy it using the land preservation fund. Um, that could also be uh, for a park if we wanted to develop a park on a piece of land. Um, or, again, just an open space that we didn't want to touch. But in th the theory behind the land preservation fund is that we would eventually buy land using the fund that would help, you know, land preservation, to, to put it bluntly. Um, so, yeah, the 48000 in it right now is um, kind of laughable, especially with how much land today costs. But in theory, the land preservation fund is supposed to be there so that we can buy land and preserve it. Commissioner, is your understanding of how the fund is funded through the city's own land sales? No, I think, I, and I think there's some wording in the Land Preservation Fund where it gives, I don't know if it gives the board or if it gives city staff, and maybe the city manager can help me out on this. Um, uh, I, I think it gives us the option of, in different sales, we can take a percentage of it. And we, we can say we're going to reserve this, this percentage for the land preservation. I think it's very small, but it was supposed to add up over time. Ron, you want to explain the fund and, in fact, where the, where the money we got in there, where the... Where the money so far has not been much that we've it's, been able to It's put from in there. city properties, and I believe the only amount of money that went in there was $100,000 from the sale of the Beverly Nursing Home. Yeah. But it, it's only generated from our sale. 
Correct. Our city land sales. So have we have we not have we not sold any land since then? No. Okay. So this is just if the city were to sell any land, we'd be able to use. Then that. we have to take the portion of it and put it towards that fund to buy land to pr preserve it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I this is this is a good a good fund in theory. I think um, obviously, you know, we're not selling very much land right now, um, and I'm not even asking that we do that. But I think we might want to look into expanding the land preservation fund or, or possibly trying to get it some more funding, even if it is just built up over time. It'd be really nice if whenever one of these environmental issues come up, whether it's, you know, stuff like the Walmart property or uh, the Wawa property, um, or in one of those instances, the city would be able to legally buy a piece of land and preserve it as either natural Florida lands or make it a park. Um, again, I'd have to get with Ron um, and the city manager and see if we could get creative and see how we could get more money into that. But I think this is an underutilized fund right now. Can I make a comment on this too real quick? Uh, one of the beautiful things about Savannah, Georgia is that they have these uh, squares throughout their town. Um, and this is talking about land preservation and um, creating a park or some type of preserve in that area. And a good example that this may be used, although this is within the city of Tarpon Springs, but it's unincorporated city, is that there's a gas station on Pinellas Avenue that's for sale for $305,000, I believe, or $350,000, just across from Bread and Butter Deli. Again, it's, a, it's not an attractive site. It's an area that the city potentially could buy or a, a wealthy individual, if they want to donate money to the city, could buy and then donate to the city and then also make it a, a green square, right? So it's a green space. It has a protective covenant on it. Um, and then you could kind of look at these areas all around Tarpon Springs and designate this would be an area that would be desirable to see a green square. You could put a statue on it with public art. You could put a fountain of some sort. Um, you put a rose garden or something along those lines, but that would again is a creative way to get beautification and then also some individuals passionate about Tarpon Springs to be involved. So, I mean, that could be a way how the fund is used as well uh, with some projects to preserve some of the land or take a, a property that is in a distressed mode or currently when you look at it and get it rid of all the concrete and then putting some green space on there would be, I think, beneficial. I think we should look at this from a funding standpoint as well. I mean, I support Commissioner Donovan. I've got some ideas, and I'll, I'll be willing to bring up in uh, future meetings. Um, also, real quick, just while I have the floor, I did want to get consensus. Uh, I agreed with uh, the vice mayor's shuffleboard sentiment um, that we shouldn't fund it, right? at least not right now, until... We know exactly what we're doing, um, so I just want to see if we could get board consensus on not funding those shuffleboard courts for the exercise park. I would be in favor of not funding them. Yeah, who would you? I don't know. Uh, it's when Tom spoke, uh, he said that there is a need. There's uh, residents that uh, that really want the shuffleboard courts, so I'm not sure what that would create uh, with the residents that, that really still, especially if we get rid of them at, at Craig Park, as we've been talking about, because of plans that we had. Um, I'm not sure about that, about not funding it. Tom, where are you? <laughs> do you, you know, do you see a real need for the shuffleboard court? Uh, there's not much use. Uh, I've had a few people have asked. There's just one real problem. group that wants to there's get something group. started. There's one okay. group. Uh, right. That asks about it quite often, but that's the first in my ten years I've heard anybody. In mine too, I've heard seventeen years. Okay, so years. it's not like it'd be a really huge. Yeah, and then you have to redo the ones that are there now. If you're going to redo the ones that are in Craig Park now, we'll need somewhere in the very near future to resurface. So we'd have to make a decision. When yeah, we're but we're talking about maybe getting rid of those. It would make yes. Yeah, so we would have no shuffleboard. We have no shuffleboard. No right. more. Well, it doesn't seem like there's a huge need then to me, from what you're saying. Uh, no, and we could probably we could build those in house if, if it comes that couple years down the road. Okay. I, you know, we have the talent well, to build it. So. Then I'll go along with you guys. Okay. What's that? Yes, you um, are you moving along, or should I ask another question? That I've got are here? we still on the unfunded? Uh, yeah, project? that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, You'll I was going to ask about the see if I heard right the. Uh, that we were spending three hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars out of the unassigned fund balance. Is that right, Ron? On page ten. 
general fund unassigned total. Yes, that is correct. So we're going to spend three hundred thirty-four thousand out of unassigned fund balance. Is that right? Correct. Borrow, in other words, reserve. Yes. Okay. Uh, I wasn't aware of that when I uh, supported the motion to reduce the millage rate that we were going to be borrowing money from the unassigned fund balance. We're so, we're this is correct. We're not using any unassigned fund balance. It's still at eight point eight million. I think it's just it's just a term up there that just it's uh, we're using general fund monies. So maybe that unassigned wording in there could be a little bit confusing there. But we're not using unassigned fund balance. And we're not reserve. taking money from reserve. No, balance the no, reserve. no, no. Okay. All right, then I'm all right. Then. Sorry about that. <laughs> accounting things that hieroglyphics that we try to tr get Ron to try. I'm sorry, my accounting work. terms. I'll, yeah. I'll get better. <laughs> um, all right, well, then if we're not taking money out of reserves, I would ask about the new Prius for the cemetery. that standard we provide the uh, cemetery attendant uh, vehicle I'm assuming that's what it's for well it'll be on site and this is tying in with the expansion that we're planning we need to be taking customers over to see that new area on a regular basis there's also regular trips to City Hall from the cemetery so this is the main vehicle that's used to go back and forth it's our effort to make a move in that sustainability direction using a hybrid vehicle instead of a typical vehicle um, to accomplish city business in a way that really wouldn't be impacted by that type of vehicle. So we're using it for, would we still have like a cemetery truck on site? For we do have a pickup truck that's used for shared uses uh, around picking up branches and taking them over to the landfill site, sort of more commercial type duty. So um, this is more for the runs to City Hall and taking customers around. I see that happening quite a bit once that gets into swing. Well, we don't have a cemetery other than the existing cemetery to sell plots in, right? Well, we're, we're finishing the up the, the bid documents to um, construct that site, which I expect that to be in that next coming fiscal year 20 to be ready to start doing something and showing sites by then. So. That's why I'm planning for that now. Okay. I mean, stepping out of the work truck and into the Prius to get to City Hall, for me, I don't think that there's any value there. I mean, selling plots, I could have some buy-in for that. But, um, I mean, until we have new plots to sell, I don't see where it takes much of a priority. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be a year before you have anything built, right? Yes. So, I mean, to me, I don't... If, assuming we already have a, a cemetery truck, I don't I don't think that we need to have a Prius for a cemetery truck to stay there and take the Prius uptown. That's just me, though. Is, excuse me. Is this already funded through the uh, perpetual care fund? That's correct. Yes. So, what you propose to, to uh, eliminate that? I mean, eliminate it until there's a need for it. I mean, to me, the biggest need is to sell plot. Right. But if we don't have anything to sell, then why do we need it in this year's budget? And to say that we're going to go from a work truck to a Prius to come uptown, I don't think that's necessary. So this is something you can wait another year or so? Well, we have two different staff members. We have the office person who does the trips to City Hall, and we have the grounds person that uses the truck for things around grounds, getting fuel for vehicles. I mean, they can share that vehicle back and forth, but... It really is something where both can be used at the same time. So I don't want to mislead you to think that one will sit idle while the other one's being used. Um, I also will tell you that the main way to show customers, I know we're talking about the timing, um, is to drive them over to that new site. We really don't want to use a, the courtesy cart to cross Jasmine. I, I feel that's a little bit of a stretch safety-wise. So we want to be using our vehicle to exit out of Jasmine and drive in to that new site that way. So I do see it for that purpose. Whether or not there will be a field ready to show plots by, um, say, July or August of next year remains to be seen, but it is possible. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're using, when we're going to have the new cemetery, it's going to be a connection, a connect road from one cemetery to another, crossing the adjustment. 
That's this correct. Yeah, we'll be leaving. A golf cart or something like that, isn't it? Well, that's more for staff. I don't recommend that as a regular way to show customers the cemetery. That's more for staff to get back and forth with mowing equipment and that sort of thing. We're going to have a crosswalk going from the cemetery to the one next door. But to show customers, we'll use that back exit on Jasmine. That's part of this budget as well, is to have that sliding gate. You can leave out through the back, drive up Jasmine safely, make a left into the new cemetery, and, and show the customers that area, and then return back to the office. Mm -hmm. And funding is available for that, right? Yes, that's part of the Cemetery Perpetual Care Fund, which is designated for cemetery uses. $2 million in there, something new. Isn't there a, there's a substantial amount of money in there, isn't there? Yeah, I think it's close to $2 million. Yeah. Um, but probably 900000 of it will be used for the construction of the expansion. And then I'd like to recommend that um, we keep in mind a mausoleum eventually as a future phase. So, But yes, short answer is yes, there's funding there. Mayor, if you mind. Um, I um, so there's not really a need, and I guess a good, better question for me to understand is, does the city have a program where they'll reimburse the employee mileage for driving their own vehicle? Uh, because I think from a maintenance standpoint, if we put it off another year to preserve it on the back end from replacing it, that may be the most prudent thing to do. Uh, I know you're not one just to go out and spend money just to spend money, but in this aspect, I, I do see, I mean, there's not another cemetery to sell plots at. There's not necessarily a need yet, so we just might be able to push to fiscal year 2021. And if someone needs to drive up to City Hall, I mean, can we just reimburse them by mileage? I mean, what's, what's the problem with that? I mean, every other corporation does that typically. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to do that. I'd find an old car to do because you, you've got insurance problems. you got insurance and liability problems with someone in their okay. own car if they get, get in that's, the accident. That, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. That's liability the biggest problems. problem with there and stuff. Um, but again, it's from the Petro Fund, whether it's bought then or, or not. Um, I'm sure because it's. 25000 is going to be spent, plus it's our initial thing to move into, into the sustainability and show we're starting to go to those vehicles. And since it's in that fund, so it doesn't really matter. It's not like the general fund and you're going to be able to fund something else with the money. You're not going to, it's just going to still sit in there and you're going to spend it maybe in October or November instead of June, July. So I think you wanted to get a, a push on so we could use it for what it needed to be doing now. We've started our sustainability program with vehicles. And it's a necessary thing out there so it can be used. But could it wait and he budget? When, I mean, if, so, if we start hopping on the cemetery project, could we come back to you? Because it's still funds going to be there. It's not like we'll use it for anybody else. The 25000 will be sitting there. You know, we could come back to you and do it. I think he just wanted to get a jump and get it going. And also, as our sustainability manager to start, that was the first place where he saw the ability to use a sustainable vehicle. Um, to accomplish those things back and forth. So, um, but it's really, it's really up to this board. If we, if you want us to wait and see the need in July, if we, if it's before the end of the budget year, come back and say, hey, we need that vehicle now. It's not like we got to adjust funds for anything else. So, it just be at the will of the board. Do we do it now or do we wait till he comes back to you and we add it from that fund? I support that uh, that, that we do it now because you don't know when we're going to need it and we may need it before the next budget year, um, and it is. You do have it funded, so I, I don't see the reason to wait another year and use use your funding in 2021 when you have it uh, budgeted for this year. So I support you uh, getting the Prius. I mean, the, <clears throat> my thinking is if the funding is there and it's a perpetual fund, and to Mark's point, it's not like you're not going to use this money for this and utilize it for something else. But my thinking is, is if we're going to use it for sales and we don't have anything to sell, why not have a newer vehicle? And not a year old vehicle when we're ready to sell. That's the only thing. I mean, there's no. I mean, no one would be happier than me if you had plots to sell this time next year. But you're not going to. I mean, I don't think. Maybe you are, and if you do, then I'll give you accolades. But I mean, just with knowing how projects go, and that being a pretty good sized project, maybe you will. But I mean, maybe you won't. I don't know. Uh, say, don't board. you have a waiting list uh, of people? <laughs> Don't you have a waiting list? Of That's an Irene question. Who? We do yeah. not. Is it more a waiting list of people who? We do not because oh. we haven't. They haven't determined what the price would be yet. Okay. Because of prices and all that. Okay. I thought we had. And the rules. We already had a, a waiting list. Okay. Thank you. And when do we think the new cemetery will be ready to be able to sell? Well, um, 
I told you we were going to be going to bid probably about three months ago, and that hasn't happened yet. So, uh, you know, Vice Mayor Chair Penny's point's well taken. It's hard to say. Um, I'd like it to be by July and August, and that's good planning. You want to plan to be ready when, you know, you could be ready. Um, could we wait a little bit? Sure. Um, and we've gotten along without the second vehicle to come to the office. We can do it a little longer. Um, I can also tell you, though, typically it takes many months by the time you order it before it comes in. So that just all needs to be factored in. Uh, I certainly agree with the city manager's option. If when the need starts to become clear, we can come back to you and request that purchase then. I, I will support that. Let's wait and see where we need it and uh, I think it's order pretty. it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have consensus on that? I'm fine. You're fine? Okay. We got the money ready for it. Anyway. Now, do we have any other uh, items to discuss on the uh, CIP? What's a boom truck used? I'm sorry, I just kind of jumped into that. What's a boom truck used for? Is that for the pipes that are picked up and dropped? That's for our meter readers, and um, they work on large meters in the piping assemblies, and many times they have to lift them up to get them in a truck and work on them and then replace them back again. So um, that's basically like a crane type of truck. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the CIP? Uh, pertaining to unfunded projects or the... Yeah. Anything. Yeah, I've got a couple items on the unfunded if I'd like to make a comment. Um, there's a few items that I'd like to prioritize in the unfunded. Um, you want to go back to page number 12 then? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mary, you brought up a, um, a couple good ones. Um, the exterior lighting at the Culture Center I think is very important, but looking back at the other aspects, uh, there's City Hall Auditorium Carpet. Uh, since we're all here right now in City Hall Auditorium, if you look around, that's beautiful green um well used carpet and I think it's uh would serve the city well to uh replace this to a, a carpet that may not fade the yellowish color that it has now or show dirt, etc. So uh I do think that should be on a priority um list. The Stafford House paint exterior and replacement of cabinets and door replacement. Uh I'm not really sure what the cabinets um entail, but I would support the paint of the exterior um ASAP if there's a need for that, because I know um, in the historic houses, if they don't keep the paint on the building, the wood will start to rot, and then it's going to start costing the city additional funds. So if the city could put some funds um, and priority to at least paint the exterior of the building, it's going to help prevent additional maintenance costs later on down the road. Again, this falls in the, Her uh, the Heritage Museum. Um, the paint uh, of the, well, I'm not sure if that's, is that interior or exterior? I don't know. Exterior, yeah. So if, if it's the exterior, I would support that to be on the priority list as well. Like I said, the exit door bars and the kitchen replacement flooring, uh, I don't necessarily see that as a priority. But um, the, the exterior paint is uh, also, um, I think, a priority that should be brought up to the list. Um, and then something that's been talked about for the past couple of years is the downtown decorative lighting and electrical upgrades. Uh, this is something that the board and past. Um, past boards has, uh, have come to a consensus on and the past couple of years have been brought up. Um, and I think, this again, this is one of those aesthetic things. Uh, we're in summertime right now, if you don't necessarily see it um, as well as you would towards fall, winter, and early spring because of the sun going down about 530. But this really, um, when people visit Naples, they talk about the lighting and the trees, and then you visit some of these other areas at night, it, it encourages outdoor activities. It encourages more people to be out in the street um, again, this doesn't have to be strictly in downtown. It could be also in the sponge docks as well. Um, and so I would encourage that the city staff find some type of priority to uh, move forward with this. And that would, en that would encompass the Mears parking lot, the Orange Street parking lot, um, the streets along Tarpon Avenue um, to really get a, a good system in place that really um, is quality. It's going to last for quite some time. Um, one thing that wasn't on this list and that we had some discussions um, last meeting was a BOC tablets versus our uh, fabulous workbooks that um, staff puts together, which I appreciate because it's a lot of great information. Uh, but for my city that's trying to go be more green oriented, um, I do think it's important to use less paper and resources to print all this paper. Um, <clears throat> 
A couple other items is the Sunset Beach parking. Uh, trying to find a way for additional parking in Sunset Beach and looking and evaluating the north side of the Sunset Beach Causeway. Uh, today, if an individual parks, uh, when it's a busy weekend, you have boat trailers that will park along the sidewalk and the road, and then you also have vehicles park in the sidewalk and the road. So if you're coming in the Sunset Beach or leaving Sunset Beach, it ultimately creates a one-way street because only one car can get by. So it makes it really difficult to do that. So either the city needs to say no parking on that side of the street or move the sidewalk closer to the water, and then you could fit a whole car on that side of the street, which I think that's probably the best situation because we're lacking parking spaces in Sunset Beach on peak season. That would be something that we've had discussions in past um, conversations about this. Uh, also, decorative signs. The city's done a great job with the historic signs uh, in the historic district and within the CRA district. I think we could all agree to that. Um, I think it's important to continue that effort across the city and, and the historic district. Um, if there's still funding that needs to be placed, there's also the secondary sign. So you think of the no parking on the side of the street, the speed limit signs. Those are things that should be addressed as well. Um, and also encouraging the city, and I think it's a great idea if I, uh, I would ask the rest of the commission support in this, is looking at the, um, the sponge docks as also replacing the signs in the sponge docks, looking at along Pinellas Avenue, Tarpon Avenue, and also the four-way stops that are um, heavily trafficked to um, put some type of decorative um, street sign pole in for the stop signs. Again, it's just the whole perception aspect. Uh, Dundee's had these for quite some time in their downtown and um, around their downtown area. Um, I think it's just good to continue this project because it really does give an aesthetics and its way it comes across in Tarpon Springs is a great way. And then if we're still looking for additional funds, uh, we don't want to forget about our um, gateway funding for the signs, a sponge dock entrance sign, and then also the signs for the parks, um, the park signs and the public building signs. The city clerk's a great example. Um, that sign's been, it's a similar sign that you see at Craig Park, you see at Rotary Field, you see out in front of the city hall. Um, it's an old dock piling that has the name of the city on there, of the city building. But they're starting to fall down, they're starting to deteriorate pretty bad. So it's, again, it's one of the conversations that we've had is updating those signs. So it's just, we need to find some funding for it. Um, and I, I think one of the things that hasn't been discussed is the $800,000 that's set aside for the turn basin. Is that for penny money for capital or is that for okay penny, that's penny money for okay. capital so that's funding if that's being funded if that potentially gets funded by the state county or federal government then we have additional funds to use for some of these other projects and right yes again that's a placeholder to hold um like we did with the original dredge um we put back some projects we saved money in the penny so that we would be in a position if we didn't get money that we could fund it. That's what we're doing it the same way here, especially since we got a short time frame for when they're ready to go, we have to go because if we don't piggyback with them, the cost is going to be more than yeah, double. It's and like a million dollars more. Run. So we've got to hold it. If the funding's not there from somewhere else, we got to be, you know, we're not going to have a time frame to be able to wait and get the money. We're going to have, you know, we'll have to do it. So that's why it's a placeholder. That placeholder comes off. You've got $800,000 to for penny type projects that that your discretion this board will immediately be able to sit down and talk about what projects are going to take priority i'll also be bringing you another one that's going to be considering that list where is um the one that's important in several different ways and we'll probably i don't want to jump the jump the um the presentation we give you but we've been looking at roundabouts and the roundabout at the end of mlk and spring in there not only would be something to help with the traffic but another one of our areas dealing with the rising tides and stuff to do the flooding project where we're going to be bringing something to you on that. And that would be another one of consideration if that 800,000 come available to do. And that'll be coming probably in the next couple of meetings. Um, just the concept to have it out there. We haven't, you know, we don't have a full scope, what it's going to cost or something, but something to keep in mind with all of the other things um, where we might need to be looking for some funding too. So yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and then you brought up South Spring. Obviously, South Spring is an area that the board I think has mm -hmm. directed you for design uh, along the rocks to come up with an alternative to the rocks. So that could be another 
aspect to, to utilize some of that $800,000 too to set aside for that project yeah. as well. But I'm in full support of the roundabouts. I think it's a great idea. And thanks for bringing that up. And Mr. LaCour, as you're preparing the package for me to start campaigning to get the uh, $800,000 come in, when do you think we're going to have that ready for it? I'll, I'll get with Bob and let you know. We'll, we'll get with you. Okay. I've been I've been talking to the state representatives. Uh, I think uh, I'm getting very good support on that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to just jump in. Okay. Uh, yeah, all those things you just mentioned, uh, I agree with, uh, and we've been talking about signage and lighting and uplighting and uh, beautifying for for a long time now. So I definitely agree that not only downtown, but obviously on the docks too, uh, lighting and, and signage is needed, and, and it's something we've been discussing. So uh, definitely I feel like that's a priority. Um, I just wanted to agree with you, Jacob. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, the rest of the commissioners brought up uh, most of the stuff I had my notes on, and they made some good points. Um, the one thing I really do want to stress as well is just uh, I agree that the Sunset Beach sand replenishment should be a priority. Um, it, it needs to be done. Uh, but other than that, I, I think all my notes got uh, got stolen, so I'm good. Okay. Call the police. Yeah, again, <laughs> just a reminder, some of those things were pulled off the list not because we just had the cut list, but there may be some alternatives, for instance, the sand and the dredge do. So they're not all, you know, they do help, obviously, to, to bring us to a balanced budget. But some of them was pulled because we either hoped we'd have some money left over from out of this year's budget to be able to use for them. Or, for instance, the sand option that if there's something available um, from that, that we might be able to use. So some of them are on hold hoping we can do also. Are we finished with the CIP? Any other questions? Okay, the next item is number two, CRA budget. Ron? <laughs> okay, CRA budget. I had a little presentation on that to go through. Uh, just to go over a little history of it, the CRA budget established in 2001. <coughs> Financing of a CRA is not to exceed 30 years. Financing from tick tax, tick tax increment financing. The TIF is from both the city and the county. The TIF is based on taxable value amount over the base year, which is 2000. Base year value is 41037900 Annually, TIF amount over base year times millage rate to determine the annual CRA revenue. Uh, CRA budget details on pages 189 through page 193 of the detailed budget book and the three ring binder. Uh, the revenue highlights the city TIF and adjusted for the millage rate at 5.37 is 244901 The county TIF portion would be 244801 Interest earnings $2,000 for a total of 491,702. Expenditure highlights 1.85 positions funded out of the CRA 103,741. Plan update as part of that 75,000. Facade grants 64,768. Some other operating landscape maintenance items 73,193. Loan repayment to the water and sewer fund 175,000 for total expenditures of 491,702. And just as noted below, the loan to be, will be fully repaid in 2021 with, with its last $100,000 repayment. And this last slide is just trying to show the uh, the history from two th the actuals 2017, 2018, the budget for 2019, and the budget for 2020s, the revenues up top uh, with the revenue totals, and then going down to the expenditures on the bottom, um, breaking out by categories, personnel, operating capital, grants, loan repayments, and then total expenditures. And then at the very bottom, I got fund balance end of year actuals, which in 2017 and 2018, those are the actual fund balance. 
The projected uh, fund balance at the end of 2019 on the bottom there is 320,271 and projected for at the end of 2020, 495,271. And that's the end of my project, uh, presentation on the CRA. Thank you. And again, we know from the start there's two, two main issues to discuss in here. We might as well jump to that and we can get the other things. Um, the funding of the positions out of the CRA and the plan update funding. Um, obviously, there's talk about why do we fund it there. Um, we've always funded it there. Um, I believe that the money for those extra things should come out of the CRA. If we're looking for money to supplement the CRA in general fund, but I know Tom is substantiated, and I don't know if he got he has those figures for you, but Again, you take a portion or whatever you take and move it in the general fund, you see on your worksheet right here what you have left in there. So theoretically, you want to take 50000 80000 and transfer it to the general fund. You see what it does to this other column there because it will immediately be some of your extra money you plug in. And again, you know, when the docs always yells about why do they get more down there, why do they have the people working down there some more, well, the answer is because the CRA funds those positions, and that way they do those. Remember, the CRA is a long area. Those CRA people do the landscaping and stuff down the trail. Um, they do all that stuff. So, And we knew when we got the hotel, we knew we were going to have some lean years to do actual projects. The good news is that after this year, you see in the budget with 175, um, the last payment is 100. So you're immediately going to ha have another 75,000 for your progress you want because it'll only be 100 and then it goes away. We're almost paid for this 175 we have to pay here, then 100 in the next year's CRA and that's done and you'll have more projects to do. But um, as far as the funding of it and the extra uses that do, I don't know if you want Tom to come up and talk about that. Um, um, he can, Tom, do you want to come talk about the actual manpower which is more than the 1.85 position and expand a little bit on the things people don't see it's not just the downtown um that's why we have our portion of the trail maintenance so well that's why we do other things because your people spend the time down there and yeah we average about 123 hours a week actually of manpower downtown uh and a lot of the people don't say there's the parks people down there that are doing the flowers and the cutting and stuff like that uh, we also have upkeep on bike rack benches. We're constantly replacing benches, repairs. Uh, we do a lot of uh, facility maintenance down there fairly often. I'm replacing light, bulb, light bulbs. Uh, we average about, uh, well, probably about 20 hours a week with building maintenance down there, doing decorative tree lighting, repairing that, signs replacement, pressure washing of buildings. Uh, sanitation's there every single day, seven days a week, uh, doing a, the garbage pickup all through town. So that's about 14 hours a week. And of course, we sweep. Uh, down there and that's just labor alone is about five hours a week so it averages about 123 hours a week uh, we also do some other other maintenance it's not weekly it's uh, by the month uh, that includes uh, 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 probably about a hundred and uh, about 150 hours a, a, a month additional for uh, other maintenance stuff other repairs and stuff uh, installing other lights uh, and then of course we have yearly stuff we do down there once a year uh, palm tree uh, trimming we do all the trimming in all the uh, CRA area. Uh, Christmas decorations, that takes us about 40 hours we put on there. Uh, and again, another one, uh, cleaning, uh, street sweeping, uh, power washing the sidewalks. Uh, that's about uh, 118 hours a year additional for those one, once a year projects we do. Uh, so it's quite a few hours. Uh, I think the average cost is about uh, 30 bucks an hour per man. So it runs about $170,000, $180,000 a year. And labor costs without including materials and things like that so it's qu quite a bit more than budgeted there well i'm okay with the uh to have the 1.85 positions funded by the cra but also we need to uh start thinking about the improvements we need to make on north pinellas avenue i mean these places really need to have them done we need to do some work there so I don't know if we're going to uh, utilize the manpower that we have assigned there, or we just we need to, you know, find a different way. But it needs to have a lot of improvements there. Well, we'll talk about that when it gets to my next one, salary about the position, which again we 
We're going to be adding plants. We're going to be adding plants. We're going to be adding things, and we'll talk a little bit about it when we get to the to the salary portion for that. We will be we will be putting additional manpower out of the general fund there. That's what I'm asking for. So okay, I'm going to cover that in the next in the next item. All right. And, and I'm glad that we're maintaining the uh, percent grant, which is the uh, $64.7 thousand dollars. So that's going to be, I think we're getting close to uh, cover everybody, don't we, Karen? <laughs> oh, we got where to go? <laughs> A lot more. <laughs> and I, said, I just want to bring those two things up because, I mean, I'll have Karen come up and tell her we're, there's going to be some differences. We've got, we'll be definitely taking some money off this and Karen, but. I want to talk about the positions first and have the discussion there because it's just, you know, I think that's where it needs to be funded and, and, and taken out of. If there's anything we ever want to do down there with some extra money, then we, it'd be easier to find money from the general fund and do it there. But again, the lights at the end of the tunnel with the amount we're paying, we, we, a lot of people don't realize thinking we owe five. No, we don't. We have one more 175 payment and then a hundred thousand dollar payment. And that's, that's, that's done. So, Mm -hmm. okay. um, yes, so you're talking about the loan repayment that was for the uh, Sunday okay yes. gotcha um, so as far as the uh, positions funded out of the CRA if that's where you're wanting to start the yeah. conversation uh, mr. city manager I don't have so much of an issue with that to me that's you know more of a of a hard cost that we have to inc incur to here to incur to uh you know actually keep the cra looking spick and span and looking pretty and the replant things in the trash hauling so i mean to me that's that's a hard expense that w that needs to be incurred uh and i don't have a problem doing so uh proportionally out of the cra fund um something that we've done for as long as i can remember um but like i said it's a it's a hard cost so i mean for the for those positions i don't have so much of an issue when you're ready to move on to the plan update for 75,000 then I have okay. more issue with that so I'm, I'm, whenever you're ready to do that let me know we want to talk any more about the positions or is there any issues with the position no I don't have any issues. I would like to talk about it <laughs> um, just real quick um, Tom thanks for the update on that and I think the important thing is just to know that the staff members are actually being utilized within the CRA mm -hmm. and not supplementing that in other parks or other parts of the roadways and things along those lines because we could get a little more creative knowing that there's 1.85 i'm not sure who's 0.85 of a person but i'm sure <laughs> they'll figure out the other 15 percent um i just want to make sure that we're utilizing these staff members well into the fullest and you shared some good stats but i think we could do better as a city with some more projects in the in the cra district and utilize these ftes as well so um, i just want to make sure that they're being utilized there that was my biggest concern is that they're being funded but not they're not necessarily being utilized but tom was able to share that they are being utilized mm -hmm. well, well in some cases it's letting people know for instance when we did the work on the trail and we put it on on our facebook account you know we've been doing that and everybody says oh our portion well that's because our people are maintaining our CR. but we're actually showing people hey we did these upgrades on faith so we also need to do a better job getting out to the public of these extra things that they're seeing and that's due to those people down there dedicated to the CRA that are that are doing those. Believe me, the docs know because they want us to duplicate and stuff. I said, I'm sorry, we don't have that, you know, yep. position. We do pull people yeah. from regular to go to the CRA, but not people from the CRA to go do. So just think of it too. Um, you noticed the county when it came around election time um, last general election when they was up for revote for the penny for Pinellas. You started seeing signs that popped up project was penny for pinellas i'm not i don't want to see signs that say this is funded by the cra but it's good to educate the residents and the property owners that are within the cra and that are also in town to say these are cra funds funded by the cra etc and that could be again in our quarterly update or something along those lines like a look what the cra is updated this year something along those lines so okay. thanks karen you want to come up and I just knew these were the top two issues, so then we can get to some other ones to get I these. We had consensus on the plan up. Huh? What do you want consensus on the what? Manpower? I'm just saying yeah. I thought we had consensus on the plan update at our last workshop. Why don't you go ahead, Karen, and then we'll see what the. The plan update? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, the CRA plan update is, this is a, the only copy we have right now, this is the original um, CRA master plan. It's essentially a, a blueprint, your long range comprehensive plan that outlines strategies, analysis um, of all your redevelopment um, activities throughout the CRA. So this was done when the CRA was created back in 2000. Um, it's not useful anymore. Um, everything has changed from 20 years ago. So um, if we're gonna take our development to the next level, we need to update, update this to what the existing current conditions are, because this goes back to 2000, before we had our special area plan, uh, before we had our smart code zoning, um, before we've done a lot of the improvements that we've already made. It's not in compliance with our current zoning codes, with our land development code, or with our comprehensive plan. So um, this is something that uh, is important for the CRA to do because it really guides everything that you do within the CRA. And a lot of the discussions tonight have been about beautification and signage and what um, the scope of services for the, the update includes things like architectural and design standards, densities and intensities, um, an analysis of vacant land and some um, suggestions for reuse of that, recommendations for catalyst redevelopment projects, uh, parking review and parking facilities, we've been talking about that for downtown, um, public uses and open space, gateway enhancements, streetscaping, signage, and then any additional proposed incentives that could be done to um, facilitate the goals and objectives of the plan. Um, a lot of our land use has changed in the last 20 years. It would, it would be doing an, a complete parcel by parcel inventory of all the parcels within the CRA. There's, I think, 700 and some parcels. I'm looking at the residential uses, the commercial uses, um, uh, public uses, industrial uses, and making recommendations on all of those and saying, where are we today and where do we need to go? Um, this would help guide us for the next 10 years of development. I think we've done a tremendous job since 2000 to get us where we are today, but if we really want to take it to the next level, um, we need to get the plan updated. Um, I did a... The key is the funding. Where, yeah, what I, have you got it down to what we can do? Because obviously the 75000 was a sticker shock to the board. Okay. So to the bottom line of what, you know, what do you think? I know you got that by studying other people who've done updated them in the area and stuff. Where have you come to where, you know, what we can budget and still get a lot of the stuff done that we can do? Okay, because it's been so long since we've done an update, and typically these are done like every five or ten years, I budgeted high uh, for the 75. I did a survey of CRAs throughout the state. Um, some of them were local and got um, a ballpark figure, they ranged anywhere from twenty-five dollars to $80,000. So I budgeted on the high end because I knew this might take a lot. Um, since then, uh, you know, I've taken a look back at it, and without a bid, I don't know what it's going to come back at. But there are some things in the plan that we can um, take a look at eliminating. One is a, a transportation corridor analysis. It was recently done by Forward Pinellas on Alternate 19. So perhaps that's something that we don't need. We can also do um, some of our, a lot of public workshops are involved in this, and that takes up a lot of the budget as well. So we could do some in-house um, staff here could do some of the public workshops. So and with some of those other things I was looking at uh, eliminating from this, we could bring it down to probably maybe about 35,000. But again, I won't know until we we take it out for a, a bid. And just for reference, um, uh, Dunedin was one of the cities that uh, I talked to, and they their CRA was created in 1988, and they did their update in 2010, and that was a cost of 30,000. So that was 10 years ago, but they had a very old plan at that time as well. I think something that we need to do is we need to do is <coughs> budget it. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, to me, I don't necessarily 
disagree with the need to update our plan. It's just, for me, a matter of, number one, how we fund it, and number two, what we select to update. I don't want to just, I think as a board, we should have an idea of the type of updates to be done and then select from a list that we find value in the update, just like we just did on the, on the unfunded project. And we went through a list and said, okay, we'd like to do that, we'd like to do that, we'd like to do that. To me, that's how we should approach this plan update. Um, and I don't necessarily, and I, w and I would rather have whatever monies we, uh, or I would rather have the monies come for the plan update, not directly from the CRA, because I think that the CRA, let's say it's 35 grand, I would rather put that 35 grand on top of the 65,000 for facade grants or restaurant recruitment grants or whatever other kind of grants that we can come up with that have been successful in the past that we can actually physically see and touch. So that's kind of where, where my thinking is regarding not only the funding, but also how we approach the, the plan update. I don't want to just say, okay, let's spend 75 grand on a plan update and not have any idea from the get-go what we're updating. I think that the commission should should decide as since we sit as the CRA board, I think that we should decide on, you know, what is it we're updating and why we're spending that money there as it relates to a matter of importance. So I mean, you know, that's my th my thinking. And I mean, off the bat, I don't want to spend the money out of the CRA. I mean, if it comes down in price, it might be more palatable. But generally, as a rule, I would rather spend that CRA money on bricks and mortar versus updating a plan that hasn't been updated since 2001 and we seem to be doing okay and the CRA is only valid for another 10 years to begin with. So that's kind of my thing. Yeah, you know, I, I really, uh, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think we have to have some kind of a roadmap to know where we're going and what the future should be with the CRA area. That's what the planning should be all about. You know. We already have that roadmap, though. We're saying we're going to update the roadmap. Well, it's kind of updated. It's outdated, you know. Right, so what's, as a matter of importance, what's important, uh, uh, what's important to you to update, though? We're just going to say update it? Can we have a, a, a list of the, I know it's it's a lot, but do you have a list of, of some of the things that we need to look well, again, at? I agree that it needs to be updated, uh, but... How would we prioritize what to update according to? Uh, right now, we're just slotting the budget money for the budget to for doing that. Bringing back and doing everything the vice mayor says we can bring, or that's the way we can do the bid to have it priced out. I mean, there's there's several different ways we can deal with that. All really we're talking about tonight, are we going to slot the $35,000 here? Are we going to go, to go into this money here and say we don't want it, although it's for the CRA. I think that's what the CRA is for, and the funds should come out of the CRA for it. I agree um, if with we're that. not going to put it there, then we need to decide for budget purposes only. Then it'll come out of this money on this no, side. I agree that it should come out of the but, CRA. But we can do every. We, we can talk about how we're going have to out. Decide on a figure. Yeah, we can uh, talk about how we're doing now. Right now, we're just looking for what to put budget wise where. I agree uh, that it should come out of the CRA. Um, I I just was wondering what the figure is going to be. Because we have so many things that we want to do with her uh, right. that are not going to be done or that we want to be done with the general fund. So uh, I agree that it should come out of the CRA, but I just don't know what the figure should be, and we won't know and that we until meet we a, get a we, bid. We meet at the CRA board and tell how you want us to go about going out to bid to get the prices of the different areas, sir. That would be a whole other meeting, and that would be your meeting as a CRA. This is as a commission. You have to you know to budget this money. You know, we're just talking about budgeting within the CRA here. So... That's kind of what we're looking for tonight. But everything the vice mayor said we could do. I mean, my other thing, and I don't mean to jump in front of Commissioner Carr, but, I mean, aren't we going to have an in-depth discussion tomorrow about our planning services? And isn't there some overlap related to this and what's being No, the proposed? CRA is not, no. Not, none of the three things that we want to update, the National Register, none of that? Those are not, those aren't on the CRA portion. But is there no overlap there? I don't think. In the email it said that. I don't think so. With the grant, with the, the the two, that would be within the grant and stuff. That's the, not, high, the highest and best use analysis was part of that, the forward Pinellas. That was part of the planning services. Um, the CRA update plan was part of planning services. Um, land development, there was a, n a number of things that were so there is part of the planning services. 
contract, I believe. But not what she's talking about going out to bid for. for this, nothing that she's talking about going for bid for here. Yeah, but she just said what we're going to discuss tomorrow night is in part part of highest and best use analysis, uh, historic district CRA. Is it not? But that's separate from that's separate from updating the CRA plan. Right. But my point is that there's if we're going to update the CRA plan in one update, and then we're going to update things that are cumulative within the CRA through three other updates, I'm thinking that there's overlap in that, no? The, this is an overall master plan. The historic district guidelines aren't, wouldn't be part of this update, um, and the highest best use analysis wouldn't be part of this update. We got the grant for that, so we're moving ahead with that. So there wouldn't be any, any overlap. But the with update what, in the CRA would be, you said, dealing with densities and intensities, right? It looks at what the current, it would update it looking at what the current densities and intensities are, yes. So in order to update they have to, what they would, and intensities, you got to look at highest and best use. They would look at what our current zoning code is. They look at a lot of the planning information to get you um, what the current situation is in your city, in your CRA, by looking at current planning documents. If I understand the vice mayor's question correctly, uh, these services are going to be part of the planning consultant contract that is coming before you tomorrow night. No, they're not. They were part of the scope of services. Yeah, they're, they're not, not going to be part of what we're bringing forward tomorrow night. Oh. As of a few minutes, they were evidently. No, you got you got the update. To, I sent you the I sent you the email today to update that 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 was taken that that was taken out of there. There's so much going on with the planning services and, and what we're trying to do with consultants that it's hard to keep track of, to be honest with you. I mean, that email didn't come until late this afternoon to begin with. So, I mean, but okay. the, procure, I mean, the procurement director didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's some overlap in what we're talking about, is my point. That's all. Well, so, tonight we're talking about a placeholder and this aspect. Commissioner Sieber talked about potentially supporting this out of the CRA, she did talk about supporting out of CRA. Vice Mayor mentioned if it was a lower, it might be more palatable. Uh, from my standpoint as a commissioner, I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to support anything greater than $25,000 out of the CRA for the placeholder today. It would be twenty to 25000 Now, um, Vice Mayor brought up a great point. Commissioner Sieber brought up a great point. Let's see what the priorities are because, Karen, you brought up a great point as well. Ford Pinellas already completed a, um, a study. Uh, the workshops with uh, residents is something that we can do and, and with staff um, to save funds that we have salaried staff that are working with these workshops so we don't have to pay a consultant to do this. So how do we get creative with our current staff, which I believe is three planners and an economic developer and a uh, seasoned city manager, right? So how do we figure this out in-house as well as much as we can? So overall, I think it's best to, to do what has been discussed already, game plan what the goals are, um, and then come back and say, well, this is what we really should do. We could get away with not updating this part of the plan. But from right now, I wouldn't put any more than $25,000 against it for this coming year's budget. If we need to look at anything further, then we have further discussions. But that's what I feel comfortable with. 75000 is too much in my perspective. Thanks. Uh, I, I agree with that completely, actually. When I first looked at this, um, I just can't justify spending more talking about what we plan to do than we actually are on facade grants. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to see uh, section by section and see how much we can do in-house and see what we want to prioritize and how we want to prioritize it. But just for the sake of budgeting, $75,000 to me is way too high. Um, I wanted to see it lowered and $25,000 is a lot lower. So I'm, I'm good with that number as well. As a placeholder. I mean, we can we can actually budget whatever number would like, but that doesn't mean even if it's seventy five thousand dollars, we're going to spend seventy five thousand dollars either. You know. Uh, Karen, is there any way that you can bring it back and, and in more detail the things that we need and how to spend it? Yes, there's statutory requirements that your plan has to have that our current plan doesn't have. So those are things I can bring back. I can bring you back the scope of work that we put together, you can take a look at all of those things. Um, the county's requiring plans now to be 
updated and to be relevant to, to what you're doing. So um, that's one of the reasons that's prompting this. There was a state audit of CRAs that was conducted um, a couple years ago. And in Pinellas County, one of the um, recommendations that came out of there is that the county take a more proactive approach with overseeing the CRAs. Um, they've been kind of hands off. So they've done um, a number of different um, items to address that recommendation, including new and updated reporting requirements of CRAs, um, uniform reporting requirements. Right now, those CRAs were reporting various different types of budget information. They want it all to be the same. They're going to be doing site visits to see what our projects are. And they're requiring, the again, the, the plans to be relevant and updated. So um, you know, we'd like to remain in compliance with all of those things, both from the state and the county levels. But from the but standpoint of the budget now and stuff, I would be fine with a $25,000 placeholder to bring all that back to you as suggested here and do that in time. But the tension now is to the, the, the budget. So that's the consensus. We can change that and then see what comes and what other money needs. We'll decide where that money would come from. If you decide there are things that you that we need to get done and there's more money needed, then we go back in and find the money. Well, I just feel that uh, we don't necessarily have the manpower to do this ourselves. Um, they already are doing so much in that department or in those departments. So I don't know that 25000 is going to be enough. I mean, if we budget 35000 we come under, I, I feel like, you know, we're fine with that. But uh, just limiting it to 25000 and not being able to do it in-house and, and having to come back and, and get more money, I think, is, is not necessarily the way to go. So I would, I would increase it to at least 35000 <clears throat> Ron, can we, uh, can you please come forward for a second? What happens if we budgeted $25,000 and we need, let's say, thirty five? Where the other $10,000 come from? Well, if you don't want to use it. That's up to you. Huh? Well, you know, if it's not the CRA, unless you want the balance to be come out of the general fund. But, the, well, the money's available, though. Right. Yes, there is money. I mean, if it goes over, and yeah, there is money available in the CRA fund. CRA fund. Yeah. So either we do it now or we do it later. Mm -hmm. It really makes no difference. Yeah. Um, just in regard to uh, Karen made a comment about the county requirements, and I was just going to ask if there's any time frame as it relates to those requirements to come and to update your plan. We have not yet. Um, we've been talking about them this year, and they formed a working group. And we've been meeting, so they don't have the first site visits. I believe will be starting later this fall, so probably some. T There's no time frame requirement. So right? they don't have a time frame for it now. No. So again, it goes back to like. Are you going to update the whole plan or aspects of the plan that need to be updated? So I'd like to see what we're going to update. And as it relates to this board, what's most important? Or we're not in compliance here, so we need to do this. But I mean, to your point, Mayor, the money's, the money's there. Yeah. If you need an extra 10, we can just go get, get it. it. Yeah. That's it. So we can reduce that to $25,000 if we have a consensus and we if we need more money we can always get that developed so we have a starting point is that okay with it yes i'm good with that hmm? yes those are those two items so anything else and i just want to get those out of the way and now we can go on to anything anything else within the cra if you want Earlier, I, I spoke about the uh, North Pinellas Avenue. We need, do we have, uh, we need to budget some money for that. We need to update that. We need to bring it up. I mean, it looks terrible. We're what do we need to do to do this? Give them some time. We're, we're, we're working on that. We're trying to, we're trying to, um, thanks, thanks to um, some information we got, we're trying to see about reclassification of the corridor. We're trying to do some things. We're, we're trying to work on dealing with FDOT. Uh, there's a lot of things in the world. We're, we're hoping to bring something back with you. We, we know what the problems are. We know what we want to do. 
Um, we're in the working stages with several different degrees of, of government with Ford Pinellas, um, with FDOT. So as soon as we can, we're hoping to bring back a plan for, for North Pinellas and uh, work on it. We just don't have it at this time and won't have it. Um, Do we need to budget anything for that right there? Oh no! I just I, I just think right now we're, there's too many unknowns yeah. to try to do okay. to try to do that with. That's one of the remember the budget is a dynamic that goes throughout the year. So what this budget put is in October. If something came together where we could do something in the North Quarter and stuff, we have to go in there and either put a project back, work on doing some things. But you know the budget is year round. You don't finalize it won't finalize and we can do things. So if something comes back in there, we may need to look later to rearrange projects. But I'm just not close enough to seeing what we can do or what we're going to be allowed to do we're, we're getting closer um the issue is the tree wells mayor yeah mm -hmm. the issue is the tr existing tree, the tree wells yeah, yeah right so the dot won't let us yeah, adjust the tree well back. unless potentially we uh reclassify the corridor to something you know with a different title that essentially would give us a broader scope and the dimensions of the tree wells how close they can be to the street but until we reclass potentially reclassify the corridor mm -hmm. then you know, our hands are essentially tied as of right now. Now we are You're absolutely do right. We need yeah. to do something about it. We are doing. You know, we are working on some some baskets, some landscaping. We got some information. We'll hopefully be bringing you in the coming weeks um, with some landowners that the commission working on to to finally get some agreements on some of the private property to do. So, believe me, that's on the top of our our working list on North Pinellas, and but we just don't have enough knowledge to give you anything concrete to do for budget right now. Okay. Commission call. Thanks, Mayor. Um, can you, City Manager, can you remind me where the CRA stops going up North Pinellas? What road it stops at? Which way? North. North, north it stops. Um, help me out. Karen, is she still around? Gonna... At. It stops at the bridge. Oh, it stops at the right bridge. Right at the bridge. Yeah. Okay. So and it goes down to Mears on the south. The CRA or the special area? I thought the, the CRA was a little bit smaller. To see, no, it goes from Mears on the south the Boulevard. up to, right, up to the bridge, up to Dodecanese. Yeah, it was the Dodecanese Boulevard at the intersection, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Plenty of space. Yeah. Um, a, a few things I want to I want to bring up about the CRA, thank you for clarifying that, um, is, um, okay, I've got a list here. So we talked about lighting um, before in the last uh, capital. Um, discussion. So we see the lighting of our hibiscus. I know that was one of the um, the Edison bulbs that went over hibiscus to help um, bring attention to the cafes down that area, and that was one of the most well liked posts on the city's Facebook page. I think double, most, almost yeah. double than anything else. Um, so a couple of ideas that I had is to extend that lighting um, potentially in between Tuscan Sun and the tavern and that alley area there. Um, and if it could be continued down to a hibiscus as well, um, just to bring some more lighting in that alley area. I'm not really sure how that would work in that, in that alley area, but just to, to throw some discussion points out to get our minds thinking a little bit. Um, Safford over the bike trail as well in certain parts of the bike trail in downtown, if it's in front of Tula's um, or if it's in front of Neptune's or if it's on the north side that's in front of um, from SunTrust north to Orange Street. Again, it just brings the aesthetics part. Um, it has more of an ambiance that um, there's um, sidewalk cafes. There's a, there's a need, I think, that people really like it. Also, Ring um, in between, um, I don't know the name of the business right now, Johnny Tap House and the new building where the old barbecue restaurant was. I know it's a trucking area, so we had to get creative with um, some creative poles of some type of historic pole, but to do some lighting along that area too as well. And then, again, to touch base on the lighting of the trees, it would be along Tarpon Avenue, Mother Mears parking lot, Orange Street, and then the new parking lot um, as well, where we could find some up lighting for the trees and also um, some decorative lighting. Additional signage is important within the CRA. That's something that's been discussed now for the past couple years. Uh, if it's additional signing, signage off the bike trail where it points out to boutiques or breweries, uh, something that I think it would be pretty creative and it's been discussed in the past before I was on the board is looking at an arch sign that goes over the road. Uh, I think the last time it was proposed, it was proposed to go over Tarpon Avenue, but I would like to propose it to go over the um, bike trail in Safford 
in between um, currents and the, the train station. Um, similar to what you may see in Dunedin where it's an old powder coated um, sign. It uh, mimics some type of um, railroad crossing uh, where you have the historic railroad um, trail where the trail is laying. Does that make sense? You're saying the uh, old railroad arm that we discussed going over Tarpon Avenue in front of the train depot, you just want it to be on face the other corner? Move it over the bike trail because there's concerns about um, the roadway, the way the roadway okay. goes up, and then also the um, crosswalks that the traffic that runs east and west on Tarpon Avenue goes too fast and it's not a four way stop, so they can not see the pedestrians. But if it's put over the bike trail, there's four ways, or there's a two way stop going north and south, and then we wouldn't, I don't think we would have the same issues um, that direction so um, <clears throat> a couple more things here about the CRA and again it's just getting creative uh, with the properties that we have now and the areas that we have um, is the Forbes property uh, again this has been for about 10 years plus I believe the city or the CRA's own this property I think it's time to remove the fence and add some grass um, and also print some large pictures of the historic, um, historic downtown and put on some poles in that area. Also install another sign in the front of the property that shows that the CRA is actively looking to sell this property uh, with some ideas of what it could look like. Install a couple large potted palms. And then also, how are we marketing this property um, continually would be some questions I would ask. Um, again, if we put some grass there just to get some green space, um, but still let the residents know, let the area know that we're looking to redevelop this piece of property is an important part. Um, one of the things, too, I think would be a good idea is to talk to Mr. Kuklakis. Uh, he's got a plan for the property that's on Ring Street in Orange uh, to build some type of townhomes. Uh, but currently it's sitting as an em empty lot. Uh, there's a need for more parking still in downtown, but this could be an opportunity where we go to go to Mr. Kuklakis and ask him if we could lease the property from the CRA perspective for additional parking. Uh, when events are happening downtown, it's very limited. It's hard to get around. It's hard to find a spot. Uh, so if we could put crushed shell uh, out in that piece of property and add another 30, 40 spots, I think it would be rewarding to all the property owners within downtown. Uh, again, these are just ideas that I'm trying to get out there for discussions. and I think it, we could run with some of these for 2020. Um, a couple of them that, that might be the bigger ideas that um, we have to get a little more creative about. One is obviously a parking garage. I think it would be a good idea to allocate money this year and the following years to a parking garage, at least to a, a set fund uh, within the CRA to say we're allocating this $100,000 in 2020 to a, a parking garage. The following year, allocating tw uh, 250000 or something along those lines. I don't really know how we could get creative with putting a parking garage in place, but I think it's a good idea to at least start putting some money away now within the CRA and then also look at penny fund in the future as well. Uh, and this one might be the most stretch, but I think it's a, something that we should be evaluated and, and at least looked at. Um, Safford and Tarpon Ave is um, a unique, um, how would I say, a very unique slash dangerous <laughs> intersection with the bike trail. Um, and then you've got cars going north and south on Safford, and you've got a, a pretty good east-west traffic on Tarpon Avenue. So I would like to at least evaluate this um, and look at it from a green space perspective. So I'm going to talk about four different spots uh, along Safford Avenue. Um, the first one is Tarpon Avenue south to Court Street. Uh, that goes along the train depot and to where the Court Street comes out onto Safford Ave. Um, it would be taking that portion of the road and making a green space out of it. And I would propose four green spaces along Safford. That would be Tarpon Ave south to Court Street. Then you go from Lemon Street north. That's along Pinellas Auto in front of Neptunes, in front of Tula's, and then next to Currents. So Lemon to north uh, Tarpon Avenue. And then when you go across the street, you would go from Tarpon Avenue to the SunTrust exit. And on the other side, you'd go from Orange Street south to Tarpon Avenue. Um, and then this would really address the issues that we have at this intersection. I, to me, it's a dangerous intersection, and there's still a need to have more green space within downtown Tarpon. Um, it goes along the bike trail. It also allows outflow for the Court Street the traffic, allows outflow from SunTrust, and then the adjoining properties that have uh, driveways that go through there. Um, 
And it also then creates more of a green space for when people are traveling on the trail to stop in downtown and, and rest. And it can create some more um, trees if we need to as well. So that one's maybe the most far stretch um, idea, but I think it could be something that would be rewarding to downtown uh, for trying to find a green space somewhere in downtown. If it was the Mother's Mirrors parking lot or if it's along Safford Avenue, I'm not really sure, but it seems to be a good meeting spot uh, to that area. And then lastly, I would like to know how are we marketing the old Sunbay property? And that kind of falls into the Forbes property as well. Uh, as a city's perspective, are we reaching out um, to prospective developers still to, to market the Forbes property and the Sunbay property? That's it. It was a little fast, I know. Do you want to answer that? Do you want to explain how we're marketing the uh, Sunbay? Are you ready to answer that, or you want to? Well, do that again, we've we're at nine. We're still into the budget yeah. portion, so okay. Um, it's up to the so board. That's going to be a follow up, I guess. <laughs> you know, it was a lot of questions that you had. What I would suggest is, is you just uh, all these questions that you have, you put them on an email, and that way we can uh, address them. Because there's so many of them, and, and I know a city manager is not going to have all the data that you're looking for right now. But it's a good question, though. I mean, you should help. So, Mary, from a perspective, though, I think talking about a consensus from a parking garage might be a good idea to start with. Um, there's obviously a need for more parking, and then if the push is to have more development in downtown, uh, uh, this is an area of Tarpon Springs where it could be utilizing a CRA funds. And you mentioned, I believe, last meeting that a need for a parking garage where you could use penny funds, CRA funds, and potentially other funds as well to, to do a joint project. But to actually start setting funds aside today um, will help see that dream come to fruition for the board, I think. Yeah. Commission Carr, I, I agree with you. Uh, I was going to leave that to the end, but this, this is a good time to talk about now. Uh, the C, uh, the CR, uh, CAP new projects, it's five as a five-year plan. And this is one of the things that I was going to, uh, uh, to present, and I was looking for the uh, consensus of the board to have a parking garage, because I don't think the uh, CRA funds are going to be enough for a big project like that. They won't. I, I can see it will contribute some, but not. You know, I think it's going to be a big project. So I think uh, the CAP is to be uh, uh, the financial source for that, and uh, we need to put that on the uh, on the five-year plan, and, and you know, and work with that. Uh, if I have consensus on, if we have consensus on the board, I think it's time to put it on the five-year plan. Sure. Five-year plan. Are you you okay with that? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, uh, Commissioner I agree. Commissioner Donovan. Okay. Since we're talking about that, another uh, another project that I think it should be on the five-year plan is to have uh, um, a, a ball ramp with parking, recreation. The the ball ramp that we have on Spring on uh, on the South Spring Boulevard is not doing it. When it was built, it was only for small boats. Now uh, I remember with 16 footer, 17 footers was a common boat. Now you have 26 footers. So we need to have a ball ramp with parking. In, in some place near the um, uh, on the river where it'll be the water is deep enough for those big boats. So this is a, a, something we need to include it into the into the plan, the five year plan. Uh, I agree with that. Every, uh, everybody I agree with that. Definitely. Okay, Commission Donovan. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd want to see more details on it, but yeah, I agree that we need. Well, it. you put that on the plan, and then you're working on yeah on the details. Yeah. Uh, Another thing is uh, a senior center. That's also that needs to be placed there on the uh, um, on the five year plan. In my opinion, I think we have many seniors. They need a place where they can actually gather. Uh, I don't know what the price tag would be for something like that. I know Mr. Likur has had a uh, an idea. Uh, how can we accomplish that with not as much, uh, not as too expensive? Uh, you want to go. You want to talk mm -hmm. about this now or just well, wait till later? Let me just say about the five-year plan. We've got, if, if you look at the penny, and also, as I said, with the CRA, 
um, this budget that we're working on now, you know, finishes up a lot of things and we have creative money going out after this budget we're trying to do now. Um, to look at all these things. By the time you get through your list, we're going to be the $10 million on an hour you do it. But we got a lot of time to to sit there, talk about five-year plans, talk about how to work them in, um, you know, talk about all of those things. But, again, that's something we need to lay out, and, and those monies are going to be coming available, uh, not in this budget coming up, but in the budget coming half in years. Again, if you look at the bottom, just look at the bottom line of, of the Penny for Pinellas one, and you see that number start out after this budget the next year at about two million, then it goes up to three. So you've got a lot of you've got a lot of money in there to plan your your five your five years, and that's going to take probably workshops and a lot of time to do. Um, but none of those things, unless you want to start them, and you don't have much room. When we're going back to our to our sheets and stuff, we don't have room to start any of those in this budget. We're trying to finish up now and get going and stuff, but we need to have extensive talking. Because a lot of the things we're finishing up in this penny, penny for Pinellas budget has been things either budgeted or planned five, six when you were first commissioner. Before a lot of these things are going up, so we have a lot of things to get on that list of those years and stuff. But you know, I really think we need to concentrate now in in what's going to be in this budget for to to do because we're already on the second budget meeting and we're. Not, and, not and 20, I, and I, but those are all slotted into those things. I, I agree with you. This is where we're going to concentrate on. But you have to have a plan of what you're going to do for the five years. But program. I don't see any of those you in know? this budget we're talking about tonight. No. Mayor, I've got a question about the CRA, if I could come back to that. Um, do you mind? Uh, there's just two other items I want to talk about. So lighting with the trees along Tarpon Ave and Mellers and Mirrors, and that was something that was discussed in another item that wasn't funded yet. Um, this could be something that's funded with partial CRA funds and also unassigned, um, not reserve funds, but unassigned capital funds. So I know that was a discussion that the board came to consensus on earlier. I want to talk about another one real quick is the arch over um, the, were you here, were you here when I talked about that? I talked about um, the board before I was elected talked about at one point putting an arch over Tarpon Avenue that said like, Tar welcome to Tarpon Springs or something along those lines, but I believe it wasn't recommended by the by the police at the time because it said your eyes are distracted to go to that, and it's um, it could help it could hinder, it could uh, cause pedestrian safety to go down or something along those lines. So what I would like to propose is doing one of those arches over Safford Avenue and the bike trail on the south side in between the um, train station and Currents. So that could be an opportunity. To me, I think it's a good opportunity to use because what's remember what the CRA is designed for. It's designed to remove blighted properties and beautify the area. Um, to me, that's a beautification project that we would be able to use, and it's actually a bricks and mortar type, although it would be metal. Um, it's a permanent thing that would last for many, many years, right? So those are a couple items I think could help beautify the CRA as a whole would be the lighting in the trees and also that additional archway that would go over the bike trail, you can have a sign both directions that talk about historic Tarpon Springs and also welcome to Tarpon Springs or downtown when you're coming in the bike trail as well. So um, I'm not sure if there's a consensus on that, but these are two items that would be relatively easy, I think, to put together uh, with some of the funds that are available today still left in the CRA budget. Well, again, and what I would do after tonight's meeting from what I heard, obviously with 25000 that we're budgeting right now, to do the study and stuff, there's fifty thousand for miscellaneous projects, and that you know we have plenty of time to talk about what it is for. But for budget purposes, purposes there's there's fifty thousand there for any project you decide, and we come to the consensus to do during the next budget year. We still have another four hundred something thousand dollars left at the end, though, right? Mayor, can we move down the agenda on items that are pertinent tonight. Yeah. No offense, Commissioner. No, I think there's it's two other though, I mean. there's two other commissioners I think that need to speak about this area still. Uh, well, I feel like we need to stick with the agenda right now, and and those things that we can talk about in the future. But let's continue with the budget at this point. I, I agree with you. Uh, I'm. I mean, um, we did just kind of go on a 30 minute tangent. I know we got to draw the line somewhere and get down the the agenda, but I think uh, Commissioner Carr, correct me if I if I'm wrong, but. You're just asking for a consensus on, on the um, 
two points that you brought up, at, at least for, for right now. Could we get consensus on it? I think we're going to have a five-year plan. Uh, is that what you were asking? I'm sorry? For the five-year plan, a consensus on the No, 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 garage. it wasn't five-year plan. This was all CRA stuff. Oh, no, because yeah. we talked about the garage, the parking garage. So the parking garage is – that. That got convoluted with the five-year plan, but I was talking about the CRA as a specific with the archway and the lighting and the trees, so that's why I was trying to. Okay, so we uh, we, we dedicated twenty-five thousand dollars for to uh, to update the plan. That leaves us the uh, you know fifty thousand dollars for projects. For that, projects. That's how so, it happened. Listed in your next so budget. Let's continue on, on with that. Okay. That's a, okay. Are we? Uh, I think that will finish up the CRA. Correct? No? No, I'm done. You're done? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If everybody's done. Oh, right, good. Thank you. Um, next item is the salaries. Luckily, this one is hopefully going to be fast this year. Again, as Ron's getting the program, um, a lot of things you've seen in the last budget years, as far as salary go, there's been a lot of grade changes. There's been a lot of, of upgrade. We've been really getting departments where we needed to go. Um, you'll see the only thing different that you're going to see, well, you'll see my presentation of what I want to do for the raises, but you're also going to see the only real developments that we're going to do. Obviously, last year we completed, and I think we had 20 items on it. We had a lot of items of reclasses, regrading stuff. The only thing that was left was the building department, which we wanted to get our new building director um, the year to look at the operation, see what he needs. So when we get to that portion, the only thing we're dealing with is, is those um, items from him that we'll do. But I'll let him go through the, the normal stuff you see every year, um, go through that for the salaries, and then we'll go back to the individual things. Okay, yeah, I've got a, a you know, brief couple slides here. Uh, starting out with a salary increase is funded in the 2020 budget at 3% with benefits for the general employees. Police and fire union increases funded based on their union contracts. Uh, the total city funding with benefits comes to $422,120. The reclassification of the three positions funded comes to 14466 That includes benefits. Uh, there could be some lump sum payments funded for seven employees that are cl close to topping out. That's $7,903. One new Tech 2 position for the Parks Department, 43186 And charter positions are funded within the 3% increase. Uh, how the pay increases, if you're currently making between $12 an hour to $13.25 would be a 6% increase. $13.25.01 to $14.30.45, a 5% increase. $14.30.46 to $16.55.51, a 4% increase. Uh, $16.552 to $18.2552, a 3.5% increase. And above $18.2553, a 3% increase. And this slide just trying to show how many people are getting each uh, like 6% increase. We got 16 people, employees, 5%, 14, 4%, 36, 3.5%, 22 employees, and 124 employees make getting a 3% increase. And down below in yellow, just wanted to highlight the number of full-time employees making under $15 an hour. Uh, in fiscal year 2020, we will have 14, and just to compare back to 2014, we had 80, so we've decreased it by 66 employees. And that is my last slide on the salaries. Basically, on the salaries, what we're talking about, again, we've, you've seen this plan that these graduate raises the last four years, I think, um, to move the lower salaries up. We budgeted 3% as a whole for the city. What this costs with paying benefits is only $22,000 to bring these lower salaries up. So you're not talking about that big of an increase from the 3% average we're doing. It looks like a lot of people, but it's not, it's not a lot. We're trying to get to that livable wage. Um, after we put this in place, our starting employee, um, lowest star employee will be $12.72 an hour. And again, we're doing it in such a way so there's not compression. Too many of the cities that are trying to bump up and get to the, 
mysterious, you know, the, the norm out there to $15 an hour. A lot of them are moving their salaries, but they're not handling the compression of the people who are there in higher salaries. Um, why we've been doing this gradual way, this gradual way of doing it is plus it's not a lot of money every year to do it gradually. And as you see, as we continue to do it, we'll be up to that level in no time. And this plan, for instance, only costs $22,000 above what we said for a 3% average. So it's a 3% average for everybody in the city, um, along with $22,000 to bring those people on the bottom end of the salary up and to not compress on a thing. These were done with everybody where their salary was, where these breaks, if you ask what's the significance of where it's broke, it's some breaks we had between employees where it wouldn't compress on them. So we we're kind of looking for the breaking points where you can move it up and not compress. So pretty much it's, it's, it's a good method to bring those lower salaries up and it was not costly. Um, as far as I think on the sheet that you have here, that uh, this comes back to the commit. Remember, I bring this to a regular commission meeting, which will probably be the set. When I bring the salaries and the regrades and stuff, that has to be done at a regular commission meeting. So this is all coming back to you at a regular commission meeting. That's why I'll go over it fast because you've got another chance at, the, at me when we come and bring that forward. So we can have more discussions if you had then. Um, and, uh, you know, we can wait and have discussion with the building director then because it has to come back to regular board meeting or you can do it real fast now but the re classifications are are within his division and where what titles and what he needs within there the only additional position is because one of the positions that's been working assisting building was tom's and the one only additional position we got on there is a tech two in the parks division and that person is exclusively to deal with the amount of plantings and beautifications that we need um, in the parks division. So, so that is the person to, to, to go um, keep our plant, the expansion of the plants and shrubbery and uh, the pots that we're gonna hang. That's strictly a person we have to need because we do not have the people within uh, to do that. Part of the person uh, uh, Kevin's taken over in his division was assisting with some of that, along with being the arborist, along with doing the projects. We're giving him that position, so we're going to have exclusively one position, which is the new position, to be actually dealing with all the beautification and plants we did. And that, that's all there is in the regrading classifications. As I said, last year is probably 17 of them. There's only those in the building department. Again, um, he can explain all of those to you, but since this has to come back to a commission meeting and do, uh, he can do it then instead of now in the sake of time if you want. It's up to the board. Well, Mark, you're using the same method as we did in the past to bring all the people. Exact same so, method. Uh, we, I'm okay with that. Uh, the only classifications that you have is uh, on I don't know three and number five that I, I probably need a little bit more explanation why we need that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go ahead and do this now, or you wait till the the regular meeting. You can I'll do either way. It's the will of the board. You know, it's getting pretty late, just so we can. And again, this I, this I, this has to come to the regular board meeting for you to approve. So it'll be coming back to you, um, either the either second meeting of August or first meeting of September. Unless you want to spend about five ten minutes explain that. Uh, you can do a five five or ten minutes if you want. It's up yeah. to you. I I have several questions too, and I don't really want to take the time tonight. I think because I did have some questions about some reclassifications other than what we have listed here, okay. uh, which probably will come back to the board. And I I was also going to question something in cultural services. So I don't know if we want to do this now or I'll discuss it with you, Mark. And uh, yes. other work, uh, work, other work that's it. No. no. But tentatively, I plan to, remember, I'm used to one. Um, um, <laughs> if I did, if we did have to have another one, I would say it'd be a workshop after the second commission, after the next commission meeting, it'd be a workshop after there, um, as the days go by. I don't want to speak out of turn, but we've covered a lot of material tonight and have mm -hmm. a lot of things that we have agreed upon through consensus. So it might be beneficial for the board to have one more workshop to see some of the revisions that we've requested and finalize whatever there is to finalize. But I mean, mm -hmm. generally we don't have as much discussion or as many things that we've either taken from the budget or added to or whatever so it might be productive to see it one more time as a whole as it all comes back you took this from here switch that from there and then finalize so that's okay. 
Also, at the will of the board. I mean, we can always do it right after the uh, the regular meeting if we have if we have a that would be one agenda. Uh, unless you want another night. Better, better run to like ten thirty. Yeah, you better make it <laughs> seven, seven night. Okay, yeah. we can do that. That's... I'm okay with. I mean, you know, there's not going to be as much material to cover, right? Hopefully. So in theory, it won't be as long. This is an important thing, so I'm happy to okay. to do a, a good summary of it before it comes, of course, in a commission meeting. Okay. I think it's a pretty good idea to do that. From a staffing standpoint, um, it might be best for all of us to connect with you, Mark, just to get a better understanding of what's going on and a little more in-depth, one-on-one, instead of a yeah. setting where we're at now. And again, they're they're all related to the changes in the, in the building. <laughs> so, so Kevin's also a good one to talk to because all the, I mean, we did almost every other department the last three years. We did almost every department in the reorgs, reclasses, and everything. So he was the one left. We wanted to get. We wanted to give him the time to. I think to, we to still look should. It. Just a matter of whether we do it tonight. Right. You want to just give us an overview? What you what, what you plan to do? The, sure. The fast version. The fast version. And then, like I say, we're coming back to to a regular meeting and stuff, and then we can give the answer questions. So we're we're gonna do one more budget work now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a couple of position changes uh, or retitling um, of positions. Some of them are pretty simple. It's just changing the name from development services to building development department since building development services no longer exist. So we've got uh, two positions that are just really a title change. Uh, out of those, I've got uh, one of the permit techs that I'm moving up to a lead permit tech, which would be a uh, permit tech number two. And the other two positions would be a permit tech one that have no change to them in, in uh, uh, pay. Um, the, uh, the old development services uh, coordinator position is going to be changed to the floodplain coordinator. A very important position within the department is the floodplain coordinator. Uh, they're the ones uh, who is overseeing all of our floodplain management and uh, assisting in lowering our score, which they have done um, for our uh, uh, CRS points. Um, we're just waiting on the official letter from FEMA to come in. However, they are saying that uh, uh, there's some special uh, NFIP insurance agent manual. I don't know if that's something that Commissioner Donovan is aware of uh, that can look at that and see what our new rating is uh, prior to that coming. So with, with that position, that would dedicate more time to the uh, flood insurance program uh, and assisting and lowering that score even further than we are and uh, being able to uh, spend more time and uh, more attention to detail on projects that are coming in and uh, making sure that uh, they're aware of the, the uh, flood area that they're in and the requirements of the building code and, and the uh, uh, FEMA guidelines. And the other one is uh, the arborist has been in our department working uh, with us, uh, moving that position over there full time and becoming the municipal arborist, uh, taking on that role along with the um, environmental uh, silt fence and erosion control uh, uh, bar uh, barriers of trees for new construction projects, uh, pretty much overseeing uh, tree bank funds and city projects as far as uh, uh, tree tree placement and and plantings and stuff. So that's really kind of the quick uh, overbrief of of what I uh, propose to do in the department. Mm -hmm. Kevin, it shows that uh, there's a big jump on uh, from grade 14. Um, excuse me, from grade 8 to grade 14. Is that yes. comparable to the? That other is comparable. Is actually uh, a little under uh, about. A, maybe a pay grade under of what you would get in Dunedin or Safety Harbor or one of those. So I did look at the surrounding areas for what a, a city arborist or municipal arborist or urban forester uh, makes in the area. Uh, she also uh, uh, does our erosion control, uh, make sure that those are in place, and also she's our, our drone pilot too. So all of the projects that we have with the drone, she's flying that also. So she, she's got an expanded role as, as more than just an arborist, but yes, it is comparable to the surrounding communities. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Kevin.
And number four is if we have any follow-ups from uh, July 16 work session. I think one of the follow-ups we had was the uh, uh, the overtime of uh, police department and fire department that was already discussed. Any questions for that? I met with both chiefs. I and, have too. Yeah, received detailed information about both of them, uh, and, um, and I'm in su support, as is the budget advisory board was in support of uh, the overtime. It is a big number um, from just sticker shock, but after going into detail about the need and how it all works and state statutes and other requirements involved, uh, I'm able to get behind that and support it. Any other comments, questions? I think uh, that's all we got. Roy, you have something there? Uh, we just wanted to give you an update on the budget from the, the one you saw on, on, um, September, on July 16th to today. Uh, total city budget proposed back in, on July 16th was 63962370 and currently it's on August 12th it's $63,846,044, a decrease of 116326 And just wanted to go over the main reasons for the, uh, the decrease. Uh, health insurance, we budgeted 10% increase. It's currently coming in at 9%. So in the green on the right, it's a 35,481 decrease. Dental insurance, we budgeted a 10% estimate. Actual increase is 3.9%. So it's a decrease of $7,656. Life insurance, so there was no increase, but there was a plan change uh, going from 25,000 to 50,000. So it's an increase in the yellow of 23,256. Uh, biggest surprise was workers' compensation. We did budget an increase of 10%. Actual is a de decrease of 15.7%. So we've got 146,860 of a decrease uh, from what we budgeted originally for workers' comp. And then down below, we've got the uh, Technician 2 position, uh, funded at 43,186. 43, the reclassification where we're talking about the three positions, salary and benefits, uh, 14,466. Uh, the scanner was removed from the city clerk department, uh, 10,000. And the general fund available amount of money went up 2,763, I mean, yeah, $2,763. And that's the total expenditure changes from the previous work session to now. And just to show the revenues, how it affected the revenues of the general fund of de decrease of 77,795, mostly the property tax, 88,795, and some other revenue adjustments, 11,000. And then just going down the line, the SAFER grant, the CRA fund, sanitation fund, water and sewer fund, uh, marina fund, all the way down to the bottom, the, the same number as expenditures, the revenue adjustments of 116,326. And the last slide, just concentrating on the general fund expenditure revenue adjustments from July 16th to now. The general fund portion, health insurance decreased 32,821, dental insurance decreased 5,890, life insurance increased 14,849, Workers' compensation decreased 108,822, new position and the parks 43,186. The reclassification of those three positions are in the general fund 14,466. The millage rate decreased from 5.42 to 5.37, 88,795. Some other revenue adjustments, 11,000. And the net expenditure and revenue adjustments of 2763, which uh, added on to the general fund available balance we had on July 16th of 120,053, leaves a general fund available balance on August 12th of 122,816. And that's my last slide on that. Just giving you an update on from the previous session to this one, where we are currently, total city, and a general fund there. Yes, uh, I was unfortunately not able to make that last session. Uh, was that uh, millage rate decrease decided? It's just proposed. Oh, proposed, okay. Because I, I had a question about that. Okay. okay. Any other comments? 
I, have a, I got a comment, Mayor. Um, during the last work session, um, I had asked Ron about our grants and aid budget, um, which is just donations we make to nonprofits within our community, um, that sort of thing. He got back to me on it. Um, just wanted to share his findings real quick. Um, he gave me it for the last 10 years, uh, 09 through 2011. Uh, we gave nothing back to the community or um, to some of the county, the county programs like Pinellas County Homeless Board, that's the Homeless Leadership Board, that sort of thing. Uh, 2012 to 2014, we gave $10,000. 2015, we gave $71,000, but that's because it includes the incentive grants, the facade grants we talked about earlier. Uh, 2016, we gave 10,000. 2017, we gave 11,000. 2018, we gave 18,000. Uh, and then this past year, we're back to 10,000. Um, so I, I just wanted to highlight that a lot of other cities make this uh, a priority. So keep in mind, I'm not, I'm not saying this is apples to apples because I know all the budgets are different. Um, but Dunedin, um, they give 2019 budgeted over $200,000 in aids to private organizations. Um, Pinellas Park gave $25,000, so we're a little bit closer towards them. Uh, and Clearwater, again, of course, not apples to apples, but they gave over $500,000. So I just want to make the point that a lot of cities do make this uh, a priority, and it's just part of the community buy-in. I know we pride ourselves on being a full-service city because, you know, we can serve our community the best because we know them. And um, I, this is just something, you know, near and dear to me that I think we can be doing a better job of. Um, we're going to have opportunities here in the near future um, to do a better job of, but the, I, I believe that the money is there um, just to increase it by, you know, a few, a few thousand dollars here and there uh, just to, to buy back into our community and support our community in the ways that other cities support theirs. Um, so I, I think we're going to have some opportunities in the future uh, to do so, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that other cities are also making this a priority, and it's, it's not like we're an outlier. Commission, is that related to the uh, item that you have on the agenda for tomorrow's meeting? Uh, it, it is. I guess the message is um, because the agenda or the agenda for tomorrow does include the Junior Spunders football, which which I put on there. I've talked to um, Mark about it um, just th just this past week. And actually, Mr. City Manager, if you want to just give us a little bit of history about kind of our involvement, our donations to that organization. Um, if you think that might be yeah. might yeah. be a good time to do it, um, we have been involved in the past, especially um, with the police department, and cops, and kids. When we were able to use drug confiscated money for that, we used to fund them about twenty five hundred dollars a year. And what they're specifically funded for was for scholarships for the kids who didn't afford. So we have a history of that unfortunately, the federal government changed their criteria and told us we could not use that anymore. It kind of went a bit. Um, we have had some cases in that list that you got where we had some donation money um, from people in the thing that we, we've given them, I think, 2000 and 1000 sporadically on there. But the city does have a history, whether it's in the police department, cops and kids program, or, or within the budget of, of assisting. Because of all the different sports leagues that you deal with, that's the one with, where the most difficulty of kids who can't afford to be involved in the league, and we have had a history of helping them, which is kind of in line with the issue that we'll be talking about, and we can go in a little further tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all I had. I, I just wanted to kind of touch on it before we finished up tonight, just that um, you know our, our grants and aid bu budget can be increased um, very easily. So, um, but yeah, if you if you have any questions specifically as to the item, we can get to it tomorrow night. I'll have more details for you. But I just, did, I just wanted to touch on it and, and mention how, you know, our surrounding cities make it a priority as well. And just the other thing, so we can prepare for the third budget meeting and stuff, you see what we've got up there. We've already got a list of some things that we've seen we'd like put back into, the, possibly put back in the budget in some way. There is some of that available. Um, again, what we talk about tomorrow night with the grant, that may be 10000 that'll be that'll be on the list to bring back. Um, what I'll probably do the third one is bring a list of all those things you thought about putting back and then you decided from there, are there any more that we haven't talked about tonight so I can pile the list? Again, there may be some budget adjustments. We may get some other good news. The workman's comp was, was probably the best news we got because that pretty much financed your millage rate drop. Uh, that that kind of made up for that. That was a extreme surprise. We know we've been trying to do good in the workman's comp area and stuff. 
I don't know if it's the luck of the draw or not, but we never expected to have such a good report, a good year, and that money was was not expected. That helped fund a lot of the things, but is there anything, again, immediate budget-wise for this budget here that we have to look at um, besides the thing mentioned? I have on the list the 10000 that we're going to talk about tomorrow night. Is there anything else we are looking at um, specifically from the commission aspect to look in when we're looking at the pot of money we got and what we might want to do with that pot of money there to add into this budget? Like I said, the budget is dynamic that goes the whole year. So that doesn't mean something can be changed, something can be added and subtracted in October, November, December, throughout the year. If we come up with something, need to go in the budget and change some priorities. But just so we can finish our outline and our final budget, is there anything else to add as we bring back? And the revenue. Hmm? River Green. We'll do, we, we, rec money, we can do it. Yeah, that, that, that'll be in, in our rec event money. Yeah. I don't think it's expensive. No, okay. Right. <laughs> well, any other comments? Well, that concludes the budget work session. It's adjourned at 9.50 p.m. Right. Good night, everybody.